It's been one of the hottest tickets in Seattle, a sold out game, and it's been that way for many weeks. The fans filing into Husky Stadium as the Washington Huskies get set to face the Colorado Buffaloes. Rick Neuheisel getting an opportunity to say hello to some of the young men he helped recruit to the Colorado program. He hopes to shake their hands again after the game with his first win as Husky head coach under his belt. Crowd starting to come into Husky Stadium, getting set for this Big 12 Pac-10 matchup as the Colorado Buffaloes face the Washington Huskies. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett. Welcome to Seattle. So much has been said coming into this game. Rick Neuheisel, Gary Barnett, bad feelings between the two coaches. If you talk to anybody connected with the two programs, they might label it much ado about nothing. That's really the way the two programs feel. They just want to put the ball on the field and play the game. The last time the two schools met, Rick Neuheisel was the head coach at Colorado. It was the 1996 Holiday Bowl, and he was on the winning side. Behind the passing of Coy Detmer, who tossed for 371 yards and three touchdowns, the Buffaloes beat the Huskies that day by a score of 33 to 21. Sunny Six Killer with us once again, and it's sunny really right now. The Huskies and Buffaloes ready to play the game more than anything else. If Washington's going to be successful today, they need to protect the ball, not only in time of possession, but preventing the turnovers, which plagued them a week ago. Absolutely, and number one, it starts with your quarterback. He cannot have five turnovers such as that right there, copying the ball up, trying to gain extra yardage when he, there's nothing there to be gained. And Marcus, I tell you what, if they play within himself or the coaches call his kind of game plan where they utilize his talents, it's going to be a much better success story for the offense today. I think he'd be the first to admit that he pressed a little bit too much a week ago, and they may open things up a little bit more for Marcus Tuiasosopo today. Now the Colorado defense will be gunning for him, and one of the young men who has him in his sights is a youngster from Spokane, linebacker Ty Gregorick. Gregorick is a big fella. He wanted to come to UW growing up in Seattle and in Spokane, but unfortunately Rick Neuheisel recruited him to Colorado this young man, outspoken, is going to probably have a big game today. He's also joined by Jashan Sykes, number seven, on the Colorado linebacking corps. Yeah, when you say outspoken, he was voted Colorado's best <laughs> interview, and he is the young man who, when Rick Neuheisel made the announcement to the players and asked for questions, said, we'll see you September 25th. They circled the day on the calendar. The day has arrived. Washington and Colorado getting set to tee things up. The Husky defense had strong second halves in their games against BYU and against Air Force. The key today will be for them to put together 60 minutes of play against Colorado's offense. We'll get the answers right after this. Welcome back to Husky Stadium, getting set for the opening kickoff. Colorado has won the flip. The Buffaloes have elected to receive. Colorado coming in 2-1, and one. Washington 0-2. Oh and, and the rain that was predicted earlier in the week apparently will not make an appearance. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. The sun going in and out of clouds. Temperatures expected to be in the low 60s for much of the game. And a little bit of wind picking up at Husky Stadium. Gary Barnett in his first year as the Colorado head coach, 10th year of coaching overall, moved over from Northwestern, a former assistant at Colorado to Bill McCartney from 1984 to 1991. Rick Neuheisel moving from Colorado to Washington in his fifth year overall as a head coach, still looking for his first win as a Husky head coach. Prior to today's game, we had a chance to talk to Rick about the significance of this contest between these two programs. Both teams have won national championships. Both teams uh, have great tradition. Uh, so it, yeah, it, it's, it's understandable why Washington and Colorado would attract a lot of attention. And then the obvious, the irony of me coaching against my former team attracts a lot of attention. You know, people are desperate for things to write about. And uh, I promise you this, regardless of what happens, neither Barnett or myself are gonna make a play in the game. It's something that Mike Machete, the Colorado quarterback, said as well. He said, hey, Rick's not going to suit up for this game. Jim Skursky set to kick off for Washington. Ben Kelly back deep for Colorado. The short pooch kick way for for a fair catch and a smart play as the ball's taken there at the 26-yard line by John Minardi. 
a reserve wide receiver. And again, a little wisdom right there, Sonny. He had the uh, ability and the smarts to wave for the fair catch right there. Well, they took that out of the playbook of uh, Coach Lambright, who was here prior to Rick getting here, and uh, the pooch kick, keeping away from Mr. Kelly. Mike Machetti had to leave the game in the first half last week against Kansas with a sprained knee, but you see his numbers. He set a school record with 15 straight completions between the last two games. Rodgers, Johanningmeyer, Giroud, Bedell, and Cook across the front for Colorado, and the Husky defense comes up strong on first down. Ball carried by Cortland Johnson. We'll get you the rest of the Colorado lineup in a minute. Johnson and Drum in the backfield. Stiggers at the wide receiver along with Toller. And Daniel Graham, a converted halfback, is at the tight end spot for the Buffaloes. Quick toss again and a good hole around the left side for Johnson this time. Breaks a couple tackles and slips just over the 40-yard line. He picks up a first down for Colorado. The defensive alignment for Washington. Tuiaia, a triplet, and Issa across the front. Farms and Williams, the outside backers. Towns and Daniels, the inside backers. Akbar, who had a big game last week. Williams, Vontour, and Smith in the secondary for Washington. First down at the 41 for Colorado. Quick out to Stiggers, a guy with a lot of speed. He's covered quickly by the Husky defenders that time. Kohler out trying to lead block for him. And they'll call it a gain of four. Williams leading the tacklers for Washington that time. Hey, Todd, one thing about uh, the quarterback, Machete, he will get the ball out there quick to guys like Stiggers. I was on my watch. They do a lot of short passing game, do a lot of short routes. But it's toss again for Johnson. They try the left side. He's met solidly by Akbar, and a few words exchanged there out at midfield. Big game for Hakeem Akbar a week ago. Well, in that uh, option offense of Air Force, you, your safeties are going to make a lot of tackles. He got a little banged up last week. Practice real hard. Practice well this this week in preparation of Colorado, and he's ready to play. You can tell by that hit. We'll want to come up with one now. Huskies shifting around defensively as Farns flips sides on third and short. Machete looking to throw. Little flare pass down the sidelines. Trickles incomplete. Tried to find Javon Green. And the coverage by Jermaine Smith. Watch this play right here. Good pressure. Jeremiah Farms coming right up the pipe, right through the tackle gap there. And this is one thing the Husky defense has been wanting to do for three weeks now is get some pressure on the quarterback. Nick Peach from Seattle's Roosevelt High School on to punt for Colorado. I taught this young man everything he knows about punting. So if it goes <laughs> off the side of the foot, we'll know we have you to blame, right? Uh, uh, he's a backup catcher in my little league team. Okay. Joe Jarzinka back deep for Washington. Good height from Peach. Jarzinka getting interfered with, so the Huskies will pick up some penalty yardage as Colorado did not give him the two yards required. Then Kelly and Damon Wheeler on the coverage for Colorado, but Jarzinka earns some yardage there by, uh, as he always does, <laughs> sticking his nose in, right? Well, it's a good call by the officials, but Joe uh, actually taking a little bit of a gamble on that play. See right here, everybody closing in. You know, if uh, they had timed it just a little bit better, I'm speaking of Colorado, and been outside that two-yard mark, that would have been a big turnover if they'd been squishing little Joe. Violation of the two-yard belt. Against the kicking team. First down, Washington. That call made by our referee, Gordon Reese. Walt Wolf is the umpire. Jim Rennie, Cap Anderson, Matt Gilchrist, Ben Pope, Jim Northcutt rounded out. The numbers for Marcus Tuiasasopo last week, three interceptions against Air Force as the Huskies turned the ball over a lot. So they'll spot the ball at the 19-yard line. Single back, Braxton Clemens in the backfield. Jurgens in motion. Clemens to the left side. Silvers, Nelson, Ben, Ward, and Connell across the front. Clemens getting the start in the backfield. Jeremy Stevens looking to break out a bit at the tight end. Jurgens, Harris, and Looker rounding out the wide receiver core. 
Call it a gain of three on that play. Fingertips. That one intended for Quentin Morgan. So there's been talk during the week about the Huskies bringing some new receivers in across the front for Colorado. Justin Bannon, Sean Jarney, Brady McDonald, Fred Jones, and Drew Walrus are the outside backers. Gregorek and Sykes in the interior. Ben Kelly and Damon Wheeler, two great cornerbacks. Michael Lewis, third team freshman All America at the strong safety, and Barnes at the free safety spot. Dane Looker in the lineup now for Washington. There's been some talk about Morgan and also possibly Terry Tharps getting some time as Washington tries to extend the field a little bit, and they'll need to do it here to get the first down. Run the draw to Clemen, picking his way through the middle. He'll be short of the first down. Lindsey Conley, a backup outside linebacker, leading the tacklers along with Jesse Warren for Colorado. And the cheers come from the west side where the Colorado fans are located as they force Washington to punt. This is not what the Husky coaches wanted, Ty. They wanted to be able to sustain a few drives here and keep Colorado's offense off the field. Ryan Fleming, second in the Pac-10, 10th in the country at better than 45 yards a kick back to punt. Ben Kelly deep for Colorado. Kelly with a little bit of room, breaks the first wave, and nobody is there. Ben Kelly could go there, flags back at the 40, however, so this one could come back. Kelly gets forced out of bounds, but this one could come back. Look to be a hold to get him into the clear. Looked like Robbie Robinson maybe got a little Block from behind their nickel back defender. Stevens forced him out of bounds. There's the signal. And almost Sonny looked as though that might have been an unnecessary penalty to take because he was gone. Gary Barnett gets the report that his team will not be in the red zone. Block in the back by the receiving team during the run back. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So Colorado will have the football in its own territory when we return four minutes into the game. No score between the Huskies and the Buffaloes. You're watching Washington football on Fox Sports Net. And we welcome you back to Seattle, Colorado with the ball at its own 34-yard line as the Buffaloes have the ball for the second time. A little underneath pass will pick up three or four more yards as they get that one to Johnson. Isa and Towns helping to lead the pursuers as Johnson went into the flat. Drum the up man for Johnson. Toller in motion this time. They'll toss to Johnson once again. Covered well on the outside by Towns. He turned it back in where Triplett helped lead the tacklers that time along with Issa. Sonny, they did a nice job of stringing that play out. Well, one thing you've got to do against Colorado because of their team speed and the size of their offensive linemen, watch the way Maxuiaea shoots across the line of scrimmage, but then you get Jabari, Issa, Triplett, Akbar, everybody in pursuit. They have to get to the, to the ball carrier. That's a good job by the Husky defense. Give Cortland no place to go. From the 40. Stiggers in motion, taking the inside handoff. Turns and gets to the corner. He just spotted the marker and got there, picked up the first down. Stiggers with his fourth carry of the season. Jermaine Smith chasing him out of bounds, but not before he got beyond the marker and gives Colorado a first down just over the 45. They like to get him the ball as many times as possible. So 
little slant in complete. Javon Green making the reception and another first down for Washington. Well, you can see Anthony what Bontour on its stop. You can see where Machete really, he just gets the ball. It's a quick step drop. Watch the top of the screen. You're going to see just a little three stepping in. Boom, and you've got to get on these guys. The problem is they have such good speed. You have to respect that and give them the inside. You just don't want them beating on the outside and taking it deep. And they, they will nickel and dime you that way, Todd, and set you up and then go behind you. Sunday, we saw some good footwork right there by Green. He sold it to Bontour to open the pattern. Johnson once again, hole off the right side. He'll get inside the 40 before he's tripped up. Daniels coming in to make the stop, along with some help from Farms. The offensive line of Colorado is doing a good job of getting to the feet of guys like Daryl Daniels, the linebacker. You see Cortland Johnson there averaging five yards already in this game, but one thing that Daryl Daniels and those linebackers have to do is be able to get up in that hole, keep their feet, don't let those linemen get, get to your feet and knock you down. Like that. <laughs> you satisfied that time? Yeah. Oh, that's a much better play. Von Tour is shooting through. And that looked like Jeremiah Farms yep. also. And Farms wrapped him up, but we saw the Huskies bringing Von Tour off the corner that time. Look at the junior from Sacramento, and he's really a key part to this offense. It's the third tackle for loss now for him for the season. Well, you're going to see the Husky defense come after you with somebody on every play. Who it is, it just depends. But that time, Jeremiah Farms getting in there. Colorado needs to get it to the 32-yard line. As they show a full wide receiver set this time. Johnson is sold back. Machete checking off. Incomplete as he Great tried team. to find Green that time, and good coverage by Von Tour. Green wants to fly, but he's not going to get it. Didn't appear to be a catchable ball, but Mac Tuiaia at that time really came on a bull rush and got to the quarterback, Machete and he was not able to get the pass off. Watch this on the left side of your screen. Go and see right there, a little mistake oh, by someone geez. on the offensive line. <laughs> Just a small one. Yeah, uh, I don't want to point any fingers, but it could have been Brad Bedell. <laughs> so somebody will be paying for that one. Peach on to punt once again. Jarzinka, who strained back doing some weightlifting during the week, but he is okay. He was a little questionable coming in, and we've got a whistle. Prior to the snap, the line judge over on this near side calling the play dead before the referee could get to it. Timeout called by Colorado, so an interesting call there and a place where I'm sure Gary Barnett doesn't want to burn one of his three timeouts. We're about midway through the first quarter. Washington waiting to get the ball back. No score in Seattle. Back in Seattle, ball spot at the 40-yard line and Peach on punt once again. Jarzinka standing just outside his 10-yard line this time. Interesting spread formation by the Buffaloes as they brought four guys out wide off the line. Washington having to respect that and Peach is looking to throw right down the middle. Throws it at Jarzinka. Smart play by Jarzinka. He didn't go after the ball, and it'll come out. It's almost as though they wanted Joe to make the interception rather than run the punt back. <laughs> uh, something different for every game. Well, uh, I don't know if that was worth the timeout, but Rick Neuheisel's not going to have to worry about the 20. He's got the ball clear out around the 40-yard line. Before today's contest, Rick said one of the keys is for his team to hang on to the ball. We'd always love to control the ball, uh, and to do so, we've got to maintain some consistency. Guys have to block who they're supposed to block. Ball carriers have to break a tackle or two. Passers and, and pass receivers have to connect when given the opportunity. Uh, we've done that well at times, but we have not done so with great consistency. 
Marcus Tuiasa Sopo keeping the ball that time, making a smart read because the downfield was covered. Jesse Warren leading the tacklers for Colorado, but a big gain there just short of a first down. Well, we're not the only guys that are looking for the offense to be centered around Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Yeah, all the fans also, that's a smart move right there. He's not trying to force something in that's not open and, and force the ball in like he did a few times last week. And the thing there, Sonny, he's not getting happy feet and running too early either. No, he, he gave it time to develop, but then he took off and did the smart thing. Second and short, good opportunity here for the Huskies to try to come up with something. They'll run option. Clement trying to get outside is going to be dragged down for a loss. Secondary coming up to cover Rashidi Barnes leading the tacklers that time. Well, one thing about when you're running the option and you're going to have a, a late pitch like that and real wide, you're playing right into the strength of the defense of Colorado because they have really good skilled people, safety and cornerbacks that have speed, and you're not going to run outrun them to the corner. Watch this pitch right here, Todd. It's going to be nice and slow, slow reacting right there, and there's already three people in position to make the play. Now four, there's just no way you're going to get around the corner. On third and short, Huskies with a double tight end alignment as Meisen checks in. Tuiasa Sopo bouncing off one man, looking, has a man open down the sideline, and a tough attempt there. As that one floated a little bit towards the sidelines for Chris Jurgens, But boy, Marcus took a big lick there in the backfield from Brady McDonald. Well, Marcus did one thing, and that time he was more of the runner, Marcus, instead of the sprint out looking for the throw, Marcus. If you look right here on the right-hand side, he should have just stepped up right there where Braxton Clement is. Instead, he tried to go around Jeremy Stevens' block, get bumped, squares his shoulders pretty well right there, but it's a difficult throw right there with no room on the sidelines for your receiver to work it. Jurgens trying to make the grab. Ryan Fleming set for his second punt. And the Huskies go fake and pick up the first down. They snap it to Jurgens and pick up the first down. So both coaches trying a little razzle-dazzle out of punt formation. Washington's one for one, however. Well, some of the things you've got to do early in the season, too, not only to prove to yourself that you can get the first down utilizing the skills of a guy like Chris Jurgens, but also now it sets the tone for the rest of the season that teams that play Washington have to practice against that in practice. And really, Sonny, that was an ideal situation where they didn't have to gain a lot of yardage to do it and in a mid part of the field where they felt comfortable should it come up short. Sure, it's an ideal situation to go for it. Tuiasa Sopo trying to reposition the offense right now. Does so, Clemen. Gets into the secondary before he's dropped that time. Robbie Robinson with the stop along with Michael Lewis. And there's a flag on the play back in the Husky backfield. Field angle shift, offense, five yards to the previous spot, still first down. Those are the little mistakes that make coaches go nuts. You gotta get yourself set in there. Everybody, only one guy can be moving at the, before the snap of the ball. And a new number in the backfield for the Huskies and one they're happy to see back, Sonny Marie Shaw lining up at running back. Option, Shaw has the corner into Colorado territory. Bumped out of bounds by Michael Lewis, the strong safety. Been a long time since Maurice Shaw has been out there playing. This young man's had a lot of injuries and has really worked hard to get back into playing shape right here. Marcus, good move right there. Kind of freezes the defense when he looks like he's looking downfield for the pass. Does the option to the far side. And the coaches are got to be real happy with this run right here. Although uh, didn't have a lot of room, at least he picked up some good, about 10 yards. Shaw coming back from hamstring injuries. That's his first carry of the season. Took it inside to the Colorado 44-yard line. Option once again for Tuiasa Sopo. Now cuts back and gets inside the 40, making a good read there. Buffalo's trying to claim that they came out with the football as McDonald holds it up to the officials, but they're not buying that one. <laughs> Drew Walrus also on the tackle for Colorado. 
Brady McDonald was hoping that uh, they wouldn't catch that, but it was a good run. Again, I think that the coaches coming in, as we, as we mentioned, Todd, are trying to utilize Marcus Tuasso on the running aspect. That time, it's a good move. They don't want to go to it too often, but he's made intelligent decisions and gives them a good short yardage situation again. Plus, it runs time off the clock, as we've talked about possessing the ball. Harris, the motion man. Clemen, met solidly by the middle of the Colorado defense, and that one's going to be close. Looks like it's a pretty good spot down there by the linesman. Good power football straight up front right there. The offensive line has really gotten stronger. Third week now working together in the game situation, and they pick up the first down. Jason Sykes, Ty Gregorak on the tackle, but not until they get the first down. They're not getting a lot yet up the gut, but they're doing it consistently. They're, they're hanging starting to open those holes. Exactly, and they're hanging on to the football. Two big first downs on this drive already. You saw the... Uh, 30-some yards. The Huskies have only been averaging about 112 yards a game rushing. Out of the shotgun for the first time. Little swing in pass. Lemon will only get a couple of yards that time before Sykes wraps it up. There you go, Jay. There you go. You got him different. A little different look, and you hope sometimes to get your back isolated on a linebacker there, Sonny, but against Sykes, that's not exactly an advantageous <laughs> matchup. Go, no. Deshaun Sykes, Sykes, excuse me, is a uh, very gifted athlete. Uh, you talk about Ty Gregory, but uh, really Sykes is making a lot of big plays with that Colorado defense so far this year. Let's go, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shaw back in the backfield once again. This time Marcus is not even going to be able to make the pitch. He's running for dear life now. And he's going to get dropped clear back at the Washington 48-yard line. Finally wrapped up by Rashidi Barnes. There's another example, though, of Marcus trying to get away, get a, try to do too much on himself, by himself. Right here, the play is dead. Hey, just try and go forward, Marcus, and go down and save yourself a loss of another 16 yards. Big play by the Colorado defense. Well done. Well defended, and Rashidi Barnes uh, coming up with a big play. The senior, this guy's a real leader for this uh, defensive squad, Todd. He's uh, coaches from the UW tell me that this is the guy that really is the straw back there that mixes it up. And they have a very strong secondary. Five of their top seven tacklers so far this year are defensive backs, so they're really contributing. Third and a bundle. Lots of time for Tuiasa Sofo. Puts it behind Clement. He was the only option. Looker there to back it up and make sure that it's not a backward pass and a live ball as he soccered it out of bounds. Well, I thought he was a basketball guy. So. <laughs> well, one thing on that drive that uh, started out real good, a couple big bad plays there, one again by a quarterback. I think he's just struggling a little bit with his confidence and what he can do and what he can't do at this stage. See Coach Neuheisel talking to him a little bit, settling him down, and hey, there's a lot of football to be played today, and you know, he's got to stay calm and level-headed out there. Well, this is where they ran the fake the last time, but I think Colorado's a little wiser to it. Ben Kelly back deep as Fleming sets. Tried to pooch that one a little bit, I think, and the roll actually will work to his favor as it goes out of bounds just outside the 10-yard line. So it wasn't pretty. They'll spot it just outside the 12, but Fleming will take it for placement, and Colorado will have the ball there. A little over two minutes to go in the first quarter. No score between Washington and Colorado. Washington defense to win some field position if they can keep Colorado bottled up. Stigger is the motion man. And Machete loses his balance and will go further back. Not the most mobile of quarterbacks, and as we said, hampered a bit by the sprained knee from a week ago, but he did this one pretty much on his own. Sometimes watch the center, number 65. Giroux right here stepping back because he's got to reach over and get Larry Triplett who's coming through the gap and every time I've seen it ever since Little League yeah. football I should know better than to trust that replay to a quarterback <laughs> you're going to blame the center every time well, you get those big size 14s on you Johnson around the left side farms there to submarine him first 
Jeremiah Farms doing a nice job that time of playing off the block. Williams also in to help tackle. Brings up a big third down here for Colorado. Third and 15, try to run a little screen to Johnson. Two IA a missing the tackle. The triplet there to wrap him up short of the 20 yard line. You can just tell that play was coming, Todd. I, yeah. I could see knew they were going safe. Right? Yes, had to be a screen or a draw usually, but uh, this time, watch Mac Tuiae on the right hand side. A little bit of pressure there, but Big Mac is out there to make a play. Even though he doesn't make the tackle, the running back, Cortland Johnson, has to come to a complete stop and allows the rest of the team in pursuit to make the play. And Triplett was originally going in on the quarterback, so a lot of guys could have just quit on that one. And he went down the line to pursue. Peach on the punt once again. Garzinka standing back at the 40. Bit of a high snap that he had to pull down. Nice high kick this time. Drives Garzinka back to the 31-yard line. And he'll get about four before he's dropped there. Do it again. About a 49-yard punt unofficially for Peach, but really got good height on at that time to keep Joe Jerzinka bottled up. But the Huskies again are starting at their own 35, 36 yard line. See Bobby Halk right there talking to little Joe, giving him some pointers, to showing him on the big screen here at Husky Stadium uh, where he made a mistake. John Jarney leading the tacklers for Colorado that time. Conniff and Clemen combining in the backfield. Flushed out of the pocket, Tuiasa Soko finding Clement. Look at that closing pursuit right there by Sykes. Just when you think Clement may go long, Sykes <laughs> just hauled him down, and Braxton Clement is shaken up on the near sideline. Yeah, to see Sykes there, you know, talking him up a little bit. You know, it was a nice play by him, but uh, Braxton Clement, usually when you get pulled down from behind, something's got to be pulled back the other direction. Perhaps we'll see it on this play. Heads up play by Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, though, to recognize Clement out in the flat, getting him the ball. Now, Sykes had the benefit of the doubt there by having a Whoa. running start, but you saw the splits. Yeah, that's good if you're an NHL goalie, but, but a lot of running backs don't butterfly too well that way. But a big 24 yard pickup. Willie Hurst comes into the backfield now as we come to the end of the first quarter of play. Both teams have pushed the ball up and down a bit, but nobody's really threatened. One quarter in the books, no score between Washington and Colorado. Some of the beautiful scenery on Lake Washington. And we welcome you back to Seattle, getting ready for the second quarter of play. Washington with a first down at the Colorado 40-yard line. First remaining in the backfield with Conniff as his lead man. Buffalo's creeping up, showing blitz. Hurst, right side, and get a couple. Buffs really did a nice job of filling the gap that time as they stepped into where the play was headed, Sonny. Well, it makes a quarterback think, I, I don't know if I want to run this play or not, right in the strength of those guys coming up there in the line of scrimmage. How much time's left on the 25-3-2? Okay, we're snapping <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, good luck, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of times what happens, Todd, is that you don't have the right cadence down that you can check out of. You, you normally have to burn a timeout. That time they elected to run the play, they felt like they had enough people covering the people, uh, or excuse me, the Colorado defense coming over. Gain of three on that play as Shaw comes back into the backfield once again. <laughs> And again, Tuiasa Soko chased down from behind. He did hang on to the football, but gets hauled down. Sykes leading the tacklers that time. Along with Jesse Warren from the defensive tackle spot. Looks like the UW offense right now, Todd, in my opinion, needs to go to a little quick, shorter passing game. They're not going to beat these guys man-to-man -man downfield beyond 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Do a little game plan with the twin set type of action so that Marcus can get to us so we get rid of the ball quickly and the receiver can catch it and run with it. Three wides for Washington. Todd Elstrom in the slot. 
There's the quick drop you wanted. Diving attempt. Did he get, make the grab? No, he did not. No. Wait for a signal. I'm trying to find some official to give me a signal. And again, Marcus just a little bit off on that toss as he tried to avoid the pick. Kelly with the coverage on Jurgen. Right there, it's a good, good hit by the cornerback. Cornerback Ben Kelly right there to get him off the line of scrimmage. But again, you're going to have to really have some quicks if you're going to outrun Ben Kelly. Great effort, though, by Chris Jurgens. The ball was thrown exactly where it needed to be. Fleming will have to pooch one here or go for the corner. Let's see if he goes toward the wide side a little bit, and he does. Hangs it a little bit too deep, though, it appears, and it'll carry to the end zone on the fly. So a 40-yard punt, but a net gain of just 20, as Colorado will have it first and 10. Bobby Houck explaining what he wanted to see on that punt. But the Buffaloes will have it at the 20 when we come back. As you can see, more blue sky in Seattle, and we're grateful for that. A beautiful afternoon, capacity crowd on hand at Husky Stadium as we get set for this ball game to continue in the second quarter. First time the two teams have played here since 1989. And in that ball game, it was one week after the death of Colorado quarterback Sal East, his stomach cancer. Eric Bieniemy ran through the Husky defense as Washington lost to Colorado that day by a score of 45 to 28. J.J. Flanagan adding another score for Colorado, but a very emotional day as they rolled out to a big lead with Darian Hagan at quarterback and held on to defeat Washington. Buffaloes with it at their 20-yard line, and they'll lose yardage on that first down play as Dwayne Charrington carries the ball for the first time in the middle of the Husky defense, stacked him up. Good job, Jamon Willis in the ball game right now for Lester Towns, number six. What a great number that young man has. In there with yeah, Daryl Daniels. It's a decent <laughs> use for once. <laughs> it's a little bigger than when I wore it, but I'll tell you what, that was a good play by the young man and also Daryl Daniels coming in to stack him up. Hey, Sonny, he's quicker too. No gain on the play. No I'm not saying no, anything, Todd. No to reaction. You. <laughs> hey, you had a career at least, all right, I know. Machete on the roll, throws behind his intended receiver as it went off the fingertips of Green, but Cedric Cormier was originally the intended receiver. Green just happened to be in the right place or the wrong place, depending on your point of view. You normally don't want two receivers in the same area, but right here, Machete with a little play action coming back to the near side. Big Mac right there putting a little bit of helmet in his chest just to make sure he knows that there's some Huskies around the area. It looked like he was trying to hit the big tight end in there. Daniel Graham. And Machete coming over is going to have to burn another timeout on third and ten. So two timeouts by the boards already for Colorado, and we're just barely into the second quarter. Washington hoping to contain Colorado once again. Third and ten for the Buffaloes when we come back. Welcome back to Seattle, third and 10 for Colorado at the Washington 20-yard line. Husky fans on their feet trying to get the defense going, and Sonny, do you expect another close to the best play here? 
Well, they haven't really thrown the ball downfield, but then again, that offense, they really don't throw it deep. But what you might want to look for is anybody in the slot. Right now, you, you've got Hollowell, Roman Hollowell, number five, is a guy they like to go to in this situation. And Eric McCready also in the ball game. They'll open it up completely now. Sherrington in motion. Blitz, little screen underneath, and they break the initial wall of containment. The referee getting involved in the play as Issa and Tuiaea come down to make the play. That's Walt Wolf from Spokane. Guy I've known for a long time, and Walt's about as tough as they come. He's okay. He'll pick himself right back up again. Watch the play right here. Again, Jamon Willis, number six, recognizing the play, getting in there, disrupting the play, so Hollowell cannot go anywhere. And again, it's that Husky pursuit today has really come to the ball. Looked like a little bit of a push in the back as well on that play, so good job all the way around by the Husky defense of containing that one as Peach gets set to kick to Jarzinka. A lot of flinching flags thrown and that one's blown dead Colorado jump before the snap so five more yards back before Peach will kick it away a lot of uh, little nervous twitches along the line that time with the Huskies lining up at him good call the Huskies there eager to get a rush on the punter see the big Bucks fans out here looking good about 3,000 of them made the trip over from Boulder That's Gary Barnett. I'm sorry, Ty. I was going to say that's what I love about this game. You get people that travel to their visit to the opponent and just have a great time. These guys have been in town for a couple days. Again, Peach, we mentioned from Seattle's Roosevelt High. A long time setting up this punt formation again. He had to field another tough snap and gets it underway under some pressure. Jarzinka at midfield gets hammered. What else is new? But he takes it into Colorado territory. And little by little, Washington continues to win this battle for field position. This is the first meeting the teams in Seattle since September 30th, 1989, which was a very emotional time for the Colorado Buffaloes when they came to Seattle. They had lost their quarterback, Sal on East to cancer the week before. But a week later, they came out, kneeled on the ground and pointed skyward at the start of the game with the running of Eric Bieniemy and J.J. Flanagan. Colorado led 38-6 early and went on to the 45-28 victory over Washington. Willie Hurst carrying the ball for the Huskies that time will pick up about four. I remember that game, Todd. Most of the Husky fans thought it was because the Huskies came out in purple pants. <laughs> They were a very good football club, and I think that Hagen kid uh, put on a show that day, as did the rest of the team. Yep, Darian Hagen running that team, and uh, they went undefeated in the regular season, only to lose in the postseason, then won the national championship the following year. <laughs> Conniff the up man getting a carry, as he'll take it for about three or four. <laughs> Gregory in on the stop along with another Washington product, Tyler Brayton from Pasco into the lineup defensively for Colorado as they spot that one at the 37 yard line, third carry of the year for Pat Conniff. There's a look at 6'6", 265 pound redshirt freshman, Tyler Brayton. It's kind of interesting to see uh, Pat Conniff running the ball. That was only his third carry. And one thing the Huskies are still doing are just kind of Feeling out that Colorado defense. Option again. Tuiasa Sopo bangs off his own blocker that time. Well, now do they go for it, Todd, or bring in young Anderson to see if they can try the big field goal, get some points on the board? Doesn't seem to be a lot of stirring over there on the Husky sidelines as Dosti and Tuiasa Sopo kind of ran into one another, and now we have a stoppage by the officials. Should be about a half yard short or so, and I think the Huskies asked for a measurement there. Well, they brought in another tight end, Kevin Ware, 84, a big freshman out of Texas, uh, to help block on this play. Short by a foot. Washington doing a pretty decent job 
so far against this Colorado Rush defense. And Colorado has been fairly effective as a defensive Boys! unit. Boys! Teams have only converted 19% of their third down tries and one for three on fourth down tries this year. The quarterback sneak, good push off the right side, should be a first down for Washington, and it is. Good job by Marcus that time, too, Yasasopo, too. Not to go behind his center, who had a nose guard on him, but to go off his right guard, which creates a little bit of uh, space in there to get his uh, ball up there. See him shoot right off the tail, the rear end of his center over towards the guard position. It gives him a little more room, and the guard is able to get a little bit better push. Kyle Ben and Chad Ward really leading the way that time to, for that hole. Absolutely, and I, I don't blame him for going on the backside of Chad Ward. That's a good one to do it with. Walrus and Sykes are coming in to measure once again, and they did not get a very good spot, Sonny. I still think they have enough, but they did not get a good spot at all on this one. They'll have it by more than the length of the football. From the 33 repositioning Conniff and Hurst now. Hurst will get a couple before Brayton gets a stop on him. Gregorick also there along with Walrus. This Colorado team gave up a yard for carry last week against Kansas on defense. So the Huskies are doing a pretty good job of moving the ball as you get a good look at another talented running back, Willie Hurt. Well, they're, they're making some tough yards up there, and you're right. The Kansas running back the year before runs for over 250 yards, and last week they hold them to 25. Gary Barnett said his team was starting to swarm more to the ball and be more aggressive. First again. Got a good block on the corner that time. Wheeler trips him up just short of the first down. Late flag coming in from the side judge. See those thick glasses on him right there. The foul for illegal blocking below the waist will be picked up. The foul occurred more than five yards down the line of scrimmage. The argument immediately springs up from the Colorado sideline. Good job by Gordon Reese there, but look this one right here. Good blocking at the point of attack, and Willie Hurst just getting downfield and picking up some big yardage right there. And it's nice to see the young man get outside and show some speed. Sonny, that's some of the nicest interference we've seen blocking so far this year. See the numbers for Hurst, a little over four a carry. He's averaging just two and a half a carry so far for the season. Another third and inches situation. Hurst with a hole up the middle, should have the first down. Buffaloes are again trying to say they brought him down. Brady McDonald leading the tacklers that time for Colorado. But it's another Washington first down. And Sonny, they're running a lot of time off the clock as well. Well, they're controlling the, the ball right now. The, the time of possession is pretty even with both squads. A little over nine minutes apiece. But the Huskies have been in the great, the better field position. They've gained that advantage over Colorado at this point. But tough yardage down there. They're really grinding it out. It's really, you know what this does, Todd? It really says something to that offensive line that's really been able to pound out some first downs and coming together after three weeks. 42 yards rushing for the Huskies, but keep in mind that includes that long sack on Tui Asasopo where he lost some 16 yards. Jurgens in motion, but some confusion, and now Washington. So both these youthful programs in terms of new coaches and staffs have had to take some time out to make sure everyone's on the same page. Rick Neuheisel and crew will get reorganized, but the Huskies have a first down just outside the red zone and threatening to get the first score of the game. Beautiful scenery and a beautiful drive for the Huskies as far as seven plays. They've kept the ball for better than three and a half minutes. And they have a first down right now at the 22-yard line. 
Harris, the motion man. Tui Asasopo throwing on the run through the hands of Harris that time. And again, just a hair behind him, Sonny. Not more the ideal spot, but a catchable ball. Well, definitely, you want to lead the receiver to the sidelines. And that time you saw Tui Asasopo throw it behind him. And a lot of that is depending on his footwork. Let's check out his footwork on this throw and see exactly where his shoulders are and where his feet are. Not a very pretty pass coming out of there. And he looked like he wanted to see one better shot right here. Looked pretty good, pushing off his right foot, falling through, but uh, again, not a very good throw that time. Ben Kelly on the coverage that time for the Buffaloes. Harris again in motion. First, nice move to get around the first tackler who was steering him right in the face, Walrus, and he'll get a couple. Well defended that time. Colorado in position to make the play, and Willie Hurst tried his best to do a little his patented little spin move, but there was no place to spin. Brought Walrus and the strong safety Michael Lewis into the pattern that time, and it'll make a third and long for Washington. Well, what happens is they go in motion and take it, take the receiver to the near side away, and all of a sudden you've got a safety and a cornerback, and that time you had number 31, Michael Lewis, up there to make the play. Jeremy Stevens checking in at the tight end spot, a guy with good hands from that position. From the empty backfield, slant in, Harris. First down just outside the five-yard line as he had to juggle it a little bit, but brought it down. Rashidi Barnes back there on Harris, but you said he had to juggle a little bit. And normally when you have to juggle it like that, Todd, it's because he gets it into his shoulder pads. It's a good throw this time, good read. You see him looking all the way towards him. Just really knifed through there real well, and that was a nice grab by Gerald Harris. Lewis with the stop. Tui Asasopo now three of eight for 39 yards, but it's a first and goal, Washington. Trying to get through the middle. He'll be wrapped up in a hurry there as he was swarmed under. Justin Bannon, the first tackler that time for Colorado. And on that play, it looked like the Huskies had room to go outside. Tight end doing his job on the end of the line of scrimmage, but Marcus Tuyasopo elected to try and just dart real quickly up the middle. Not much there. Almost as though he saw the corner being controlled. Gary Barnett watching to see what his defense is going to do. Kevin Ware in at the tight end position now on second down. Jurgens, the motion man. Conniff, good line surge that time, and he'll take it inside the two. Wheeler leading the tacklers that time for Colorado along with McDonald. See the lineman there for the Huskies pretty much upright. Not going to get a good push on your defensive opponent if you're up that high Todd but again it's kind of a Spanish mouth kind of concept right now with just pounding away and not trying to do too much on the corner. So Pat Conniff has doubled his carries for the season <laughs> up to four now. First the single setback double tight end this time to Stevens and Westra. Tuiasa Sopo met at the goal line did he break the plane. No signal doesn't appear Boy, it appeared as though he might have gotten the ball stuck out there for a second, but they will call him short by about a foot. Walrus McDonald picking himself up off the ground. Let's watch it again. Right here, Tuyasa Sobo electing to go up the middle. Good job, Gregory, right there, 35. If he had not come up and made the big hit, it would have been a touchdown. And if Marcus had been hands free instead of having to fight loose he might have been able to break the plane as well Huskies will go for it now they've converted some fourth downs already in this drive this is the biggest one in goal line situation Conniff the up man Hurst the tailback it's Hurst touchdown Huskies
He's not too fired up. Uh, <laughs> watch it right here. Watch Chad Ward, the center, kind of, and over the top. Great job by Willie Hurst to get up and over. Watch the line play right here, Todd. You see Chad Ward pulling out, allowing Conniff to come up and get the middle linebacker. Anderson's extra point is good. First rushing touchdown of the year for the sophomore from Compton, California. And Washington is on the board first. A 14 play drive for Washington capped by the Willie Hurst touchdown. The Huskies lead it 7-0. Washington on the board first. Skursky set to kick off. Then Kelly and Damon Wheeler back deep. It'll be Kelly at the two. Breaks away from a couple tackles and gets more yardage. Breaks clear again. Ben Kelly pulling away. And he will tie the ball game with a 98-yard kickoff return. Missed tackles by Washington allow the Buffaloes to get on the board. Todd, when this play was unfolding, I looked at the coverage and I said, boy, they don't look like they're running downfield very hard. Madriata right there, number eight, trying to tackle him up high. But I tell you what, this Kelly kid, put fear in the Husky special team coaches and I'll tell you that's the reason right there. He saunters into the end zone for the 98 yard kickoff return. Extra point attempt by Jeremy Aldridge is good and just like that when you think you're controlling the game a little bit special teams come back to haunt you. Well, that's one of the facets of playing football. You've got your offense, your defense, turnovers, special teams, and it's a real disappointment, I'm sure, for Bobby Halk of the UW coaching staff, but that young man, number one, Kelly, <laughs> coming in, they knew he was going to be tough. Got a player down on the extra point. Pat Johnson's kickoff return, the last time someone ran one back against the Huskies, but after Washington kept the ball for better than seven minutes, Taking that amount of time to go 44 yards on a 14 play drive. Rick Neuheisel pointing some fingers right now as Colorado has come back to even the score. A week ago, the Huskies got a 100-yard kick return from Paul Arnold. Today, they give one up to Ben Kelly at 98 yards, the longest return against the Huskies in their history. This one's going to Jarzinka outside the 10-yard line. And he'll make it over the 25 before he's yanked down. Walrus on the coverage for Colorado. Late flag came in there as well, Todd. A look at the freshman, Paul Arnold. Set a school record with a 100-yard kick return, record that will never be broken. <laughs> Penalty against Washington will bring the ball back a little bit further. Lock in the back will bring the ball further back for Washington. And as we mentioned a week ago, the guy that Husky fans have been waiting to see do something, the freshman from Kennedy High School in Seattle. 
had the 100-yard kick return, and now he's lined up in the backfield for Washington. And he'll get his first carry of the day for just a couple yards. Jason Sykes celebrating his 20th birthday today, leading the tacklers for Colorado that time. Sam Talalea also there for the Buffs. That young man is impressive, son. He's 6'3", 230, and he is impact in motion. Well, he's only a sophomore, and he is a very good player. He's got a lot of speed, but the down lineman also contributed to this play, tying up everybody. And not much running room for Paul Arnold on his first carry, but I'll tell you what, he will come back. He'll probably see some daylight and hopefully run away from number seven. Yeah, I'm sure they'd all love to run away from number seven. They'll try it this time again. Arnold dodging by a couple as he didn't get a lot of help. Sykes there to help wrap him up once again and maybe a yard or two. Gregorick also there as uh, Arnold did a nice job of avoiding tacklers in the backfield. <laughs> Not a lot of room to go. He kind of looked like he was uh, tiptoeing there at the end of that play. You know, keep in mind he still is only a true freshman and it's a big time change from playing high school ball uh, just a mere three games ago and now he's into his third game as a collegian and it's a whole different ball game. Still learning about checks and reads and a whole lot of different adjustments that don't exist on the high school level. Shaw is the sole back on this third down play. Little slant in, batted away as Walrus gets a hand on it. That one was intended for Jeremy Stevens. And a roar again from the Buffalo faithful. Nice read that time by the redshirt freshman Walrus. He's called a drop linebacker, and that's exactly what he did that time. Yeah, he dropped right with Jeremy Stevens. Uh, Jeremy Stevens not able to shake him, as you say, and uh, good play. Fleming will have to let one fly from deep in his own end this time. Kelly, who just broke the 98-yard kick, is back deep in punt return. Lots of time, and they're not going to let Kelly do anything with this when the low-line driver on the hop and he's going to be wrapped up and breaks away so a couple of missed tackle opportunities big block there on Akbar a flag thrown up they're going to call that block it appeared to be a legal block and now you see Kelly coming out with a little bit of smack for the far sidelines after his helmet gets pulled so we've got the official's going to official is talking to Kelly down there and not going to let him get away with anything. And he tells everybody to clear out. Hooks missing the initial tackle, but then watch the hit here. Now, th that looked to be a legal block to me, Sonny, but well, they flagged it. It all depends on where his helmet is when he makes contact. Now, let's take a look at the Colorado helmet coming up. Right there, 34 is behind Akbar, and in fact, that is a block from behind. Now, I don't know about this call where they said it was a face mask. It was a good helmet rip, but I don't a good see helmet a face rip. mask anywhere. We're still trying to get this all unsorted. And now the Washington coaches are saying, hey, Kelly's mouthing off. He should be ejected from the game. He did a little taunting down there along the sidelines. And this is a spot where Gordon Reese and his crew are going to have to contain a whole lot of things right here. There's frustration after Kelly's first run back, then with him talking now. And you can see Gordon kind of uh, sort of taking a Brian Keith sort of reflective moment there for a moment as he uh, talks now to uh, Joe Hanningmeyer, who's one of the captains today for Colorado. And this one has a, a lot to sort out. Just kept waiting for Uncle Bill to hand out punishment right there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of looked like what he was going to do. Well, I tell you what, Bobby Howe can't be happy with special teams play and the tackling on uh, two special teams plays. I would want to kick off in this a punt. Give Cre Kelly a lot of credit though. He, that young man's tough to bring down, but you've got to be able to get more people on him. A little bit of time to decide here what's going on. And he's spending most of the time though still talking to Joe Hanningmeyer, so that may in the end bode well for Washington. Grabbing the face mask against Washington. That penalty is going to be declined. 
Illegal block in the back by the receiving team during the run back at the 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Colorado will keep the ball first and 10. They declined the face mask to call them. Bobby Houck a little bit mystified by a young man he watched run back kicks a year ago at Colorado. And Gary Barnett's team will have the ball now at the 31 yard line as we're finally set to go back to action. Diggers in motion. Machete going to throw a little swing pass out now for Johnson. Machete looking for an open receiver, now trying to go long, and it's going to be intercepted. Jermaine Smith with the pick for the Huskies and a flag thrown on that play. Yep, Anthony Bonchur. Looked like he got a block from behind on the return, but it was a good pick. I, I believe that the Huskies uh, had that one read all the way. That was a ball that was really up for grabs, Sonny, as he tried to find Stiggers, and it was not a well-thrown ball at all. Boy, he certainly had enough time to get rid of the football. With less than two minutes to go in the first half, it's almost like a punt, though. You're going to pin them back in their own end of the field. Especially with the penalty. The block. The spot of the foul. First down. You heard the end of that call as Machete takes a look up at the board with his fourth interception of the season. He's look at he's throwing off his right foot, trying to throw the ball downfield, and he certainly had enough time to plant his back foot and push off and get a little zip on it. I don't think it made any difference on the play. He was well covered, but again, that's the second or third time we've seen Machete throw a, a wounded duck downfield. Smith with his first interception of the year, the second by the Huskies, and we'll see what they do deep in their own end. Arnold, stutter stepped and found a hole. Well, he really slid laterally very nicely, Sonny. He's a real smooth runner. He runs a little upright, as we saw in that play, but he kind of just sidesteps a little bit, and, and he's through the hole in a real hurry. But you love it when a young man gives you flashes like that. Let's watch him slide again. Good blocking up front. Kyle Ben up there blocking his man on the nose guard. But just a little smooth action. Once he's by the line of scrimmage, it's nice that everybody makes their blocks. You see Gregorick right there slip in, but Chad Ward's all over him. Good blocking, good scheme that time. Conniff resetting. Arnold once again trying to find a spot somewhere, and he tried to get left corner. It was strung well by Colorado that time. Tucked it up for what he could get. That's a smart move right there. I, at first, I thought when I saw the play, I said, uh-oh, he's going to try and reverse his field all the way around. Made the smart move and just stepped up and got what he could. That should be the final play of the half as it'll be just short of the first down. And the Huskies, I think, will be content to just let it sit right there. Paul Arnold with a couple of carries to close out this first half of play. A half which Washington is fairly well dominated statistically, except for just one play, the touchdown by Kelly. Washington got on the board first as they kept the ball for a 14-play drive, better than seven minutes. First with the touchdown, but on the very next play, Colorado even things up. Ben Kelly with the second kickoff touchdown return of his career. And we're all even as the Husky special teams couldn't keep him bottled up. The first half of this one in the books, an entertaining first half, not a high-scoring one, but the Huskies and Buffaloes are all even at seven. Welcome back to Seattle. Both teams out on the field. We're just about ready to start the third quarter of play with Washington and Colorado tied at seven apiece. 
All the scoring happening in the second quarter of play and really happening within a matter of seconds. First it was Hurst for the rushing touchdown. And then right after that, Kelly returned the kick 98 yards for the score and we went in 7-7, Sonny. Exactly, not much happening until these plays and right there we saw how Colorado scored with a lot of missed tackles by the Husky special teams and hopefully they can get on track and return one of their own. Kickoff in the air, a fair catch signaled for and caught as Jarzinka was trying to call. It looked like a shortstop and an outfielder trying to call Spencer Morona off, but Morona had signaled for the fair catch and so Washington will take the ball there as we take a look at some of the numbers from the opening half of play. And the biggest one there, Sonny, is at the bottom in terms of time of possession. Washington keeping the ball twice as long as Colorado. That's part of the game plan coming in is keep their the ball in the Purple's hands and, and not let Colorado run a lot of plays, which coming in the ball game, Todd, they had a lot of plays. They're averaging 84 plays a game. You have one of the top in the country at that. You saw about 100 yards of total offense for Washington in the first half of play. On the option, big corner opening there for Tuiasa Sopo, and he's finally dragged down over the 30-yard line. Barnes and Kelly there to stop him. And again, Barnes, as we mentioned earlier, one of the top tacklers in this Colorado defensive unit. Lewis, the strong safety leads, and Barnes, the free safety, is third in tackles, and they swarm to the ball in a hurry, but a nice gain and a first down there by Marcus. First lined up with Conniff once again. Batted away as he had Conniff out in the flat, but it was read well by McDonald, and he breaks that one up. Boy, Mark, that time, too, Yasa Sopo needs to just lop that ball over the outstretched hands there of uh, McDonald, but Marcus is, you know, there's a few things he's been trying to work on in the first half, although the stats haven't been fantastic for him. There you get a look at it with three for 10 passing and Machete himself only five for eight, high percentage, but only 34 yards to show throw it and a big interception before halftime. Yeah, and Machete has been passing well throughout the year. He's completed 72% of his passes. Shaw back in and in the backfield now as they go option to the left side. And again, the corner opens up for Marcus. First down and more. Got tripped up by Barnes, but usually you assign a player to every part of that option, Sonny, and whoever's got responsibility for the quarterback isn't getting to Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Well, you, you got to reach out on the end of the line of scrimmage and, and attack from that point. And Jeremy Stevens out there right here, I think as he turned up or faked, he could have pitched back out to Maurice Shaw, but... We also know that Albus Brooks, 21, is in for Michael Lewis, who is the number one tackler on this squad, is out right now. C21 getting blocked by Dane Looker. Not being able to get into the, to the ball game. And another first down for Washington at the 41. A little delay for Hurst. He finds a hole on the left side. First down, Washington, and he just barely gets wrapped up around the ankles. Brought down by Brooks that time. The Huskies all of a sudden are finding room along the ground. Well, I'll tell you, the key right now on that play was not only at the line of scrimmage, but let's watch from the right side here. Number nine, Gerald Harris getting downfield to throw a block right there on Brooks again in for the injured, apparently injured Michael Lewis. And Huskies are coming out, and they must have made some nice adjustments at halftime. So far, they're moving the ball quite well. First rotating out. Shaw back in. We haven't seen Clemen for a while since he was shaken up. Shaw getting it inside the Colorado 40. Walrus leading the tacklers there. And you can see Maurice Shaw feeling a little fired up about what his line's doing right now. Well, you got to look at the interior between the guards, really. And you're looking at Chad Ward and Rock Nelson, 55. 55 going out and doing a great job in a double team with Chad Ward on Gregory which is really opening up the holes right now. Good adjustment apparently at halftime by the Huskies. Give eight more for Ward right there, or for uh, Shaw, excuse me. And Maurice credited now with 17. In the flat, Tuiasa Sopo finds Stevens. Breaks one, breaks another inside the five yard line. 
That's what they want to see from the young man. And Jeremy Stevens with his second reception of the year busts a big one for Washington. I tell you what, even in this half so far, by running the football right there, a little play action, they've had success early, allowed Tuyasa Sopo to get outside and find the big tight end who would come across the field and found the open seam. You see him release right there, Todd, on the right side, going down where nobody is in coverage because of the success of the run. A diving attempt in there by Rashidi Barnes, but no success. 36 yards on the play. And a little pointing over to the other sideline by Marcus. First and goal, Washington. Touchdown, Huskies. Second of the game for Willie Hirsch. That's the way Rick Neuheisel wanted to come out of the locker room at halftime. I tell you what, Carl Dorrell, the offensive coordinators, calling some very fine plays right there to start the second half. And you saw Tuyasa Sopo point out. He actually was pointing at the offensive line because they really did a job to start this half. Willie's getting into the leaping act. He's getting into the leap. He did it in the first half and on this one. Anderson on to attempt the extra point. Ryan Miladich the hold. And Washington back out in front once again. The Huskies move smartly down the field in two and a half minutes. And they go back out in front with an 80-yard drive. Washington 14, Colorado 7. Washington takes the opening kick in the third quarter and moves down the field. You see Strisky getting set to tee it off, and we'll see what strategy the Huskies will employ against Kelly this time. I think the old squib kick would probably be in line. There's that set up play 80-yard drive. Pretty so impressive. It's seven minutes on the first drive, but this one they just went zip down the field. Of course, the big pass play to Stevens doing much of the damage. They're going to go cross field and up high. Fair catch signaled for, and... Tell you, everybody's just playing it back and forth the same way. Kelly makes the grab at the 27. And again, some arguments back and forth about some contact on the play, but Colorado will be in pretty good field position. They do that right in there. college football? They do that? Argue? Yeah. Nah, never. Well, so far, the Colorado offense hasn't been as impressive as I saw on film against Kansas and San Jose State, but credit the UW defense, Todd, because they've really done a good job of keeping them in check. There's what the Buffaloes did in the first half. The touchdown coming on the kick return. And then they had the interception deep. Johnson carrying on first down. Just to go back, Sonny, to the point you were making, this team is fifth in the country, Colorado, in total offense, averaging over 527 yards a game. Yeah, I mean, we talked about 84 plays a game. and uh, But the UW defense, is, you know, they go against BYU, which is typically is an older squad, and the passing attack to the option offense last week. This team, they're playing a team that's pretty much playing straight up. Johnson once again, and he trips over his own lineman as he tried to break it outside. Williams was there to help contain him, but Cook, his left side blocker, had gone down. That was a great job by Jabari Issa that time, and... Lester Towns also, but Jabari Issa will get an opportunity here on the left side, 95. Right there just takes out the interference, allowing, it looks like uh, Jabari Williams to be able to make a play, 13, but didn't have to. His own man tackled him. Took out the interference and the blockers. Quick swing pass for Stiggers. He'll be close to first down yardage and should have it. Farms in on the tackle along with Von Tour, and they'll spot it just beyond the sticks. It should be good enough and is. For a Colorado first down. Colorado not using that play since their opening drive to start the ball game, but Stiggers is a breakaway threat anytime he gets the football. Quick look there at Cedric Cormier, who's been in a couple times as a backup wide receiver. Well, Another they, guy in their speed package, and there's Stiggers as well. They spread the ball around. They've got a lot of people that catch the football. Here's a little play action down the middle. Oops. Wide open on the inside. That one's going to go to Eric McCready. He's finally chased out of bounds. That time, Machete had a man wide open and appeared to tight end down the middle of the field. And he elected to go to the shorter receiver that time, the short out. 
to McCready, but Todd, I'm telling you, the tight end was wide open down the middle. Daniels helped to run him out of bounds. They pick up another first down as Machete went for the sure thing as well, Sonny. Well, Colorado also right now has picked it up a little bit. The pace is a little crisper. They're starting to throw the ball. They're probably getting back to what really has made him successful, and that's having Machete throw the football. When you complete 72%, you might as well go back to it. Checked off by Machete. Throwing underneath. And that one will be close to a first down again. John Minardi, the wide receiver, the sophomore who was voted as their most improved offensive player in spring ball a year ago. Daniels in on the stop for Washington, but that one will be a first down again for Colorado. These are good plays. You watch the lineman. It's like it's a wide receiver screen, basically, is what it is. Having a receiver come underneath that time, Minardi, but you get those big linemen just barreling out there, and it's really a good, good play. Minardi with his fourth catch of the year, and Colorado so far, Sonny, is answering that opening drive of Washington, moving just as smartly down the field. Now they'll crank it up, a little pause momentarily. Johnson getting the toss. Picks his way through, and Akbar takes him off his feet. Nice stop there by Akeem Akbar, but a good gain on first down all the way to the 33. Starting to mix it up quite well, and this is pretty much the Colorado offense using the pass to set up the run, and that time Johnson with a pretty good hole up the right side. Cortland Johnson averaging a little over 71 yards a game, fairly quiet in the first half. But he picks up almost eight on that one big hole here for Johnson and again just gets hit a sort of a shoulder tackle that time bringing him down by Curtis Williams but another Colorado first down that was a big gap right there Sonny. well I tell you the one thing that you, when you see that play you wonder where are the middle linebackers on this play see Lester Town shooting the left side Daryl Daniels totally out of position right there 24 to even make a play looked like he wasn't quite sure where he was supposed to be Johnson now with 20 yards rushing just on this drive alone, 49 for the game. Machete with time, throwing into the flat, incomplete. Good coverage for Washington that time by Williams on the intended receiver, Brandon Drum, the fullback who gets used more as a receiver than a rusher. Colorado, I'm sorry, Todd, I was just going to say that Colorado's playing quite a few redshirt freshmen today and Drum being one of them, but no carries this season as a back. Young man from Anchorage, Alaska, one of a couple on the Colorado roster. Johnson, short yardage, Daniels and Triplett combined to wrap him up that time. And it'll make it a third and long for Colorado, first time they face that in this drive. Buffaloes with four first downs already on this drive. They had only three in the game prior to it. Some of the extra padding there. You saw the brace around Machete who had the sprained knee a week ago. They need to get it inside the 14-yard line. Lofting it for Stiggers. There are two receivers in the pattern. Stiggers is complaining. There you can see him now. He was complaining he was interfered with on the play. But that ball was not even going to be caught. That was, again, a poorly thrown football by the Colorado quarterback, Machete, that time. When you're hugging the sidelines as close as Stiggers was, there's not much room to operate in. And see how he lost the ball? He's just nowhere near the receiver. And Minardi's also there. You see, again, there are two in the pattern as the Huskies were both there to cover. Jeremy Aldrich set to attempt a field goal. He was 5 for 5, and all of those coming last week. And he's missed it after being perfect a week ago and setting the Colorado school record. He pulls that one wide. So the Huskies stiffen and hold on the field goal attempt as well. Washington will have the ball in a seven-point lead when we return.
Welcome back to Seattle. Washington with the ball at the 22 yard line. Time for Tui Asasopo. Long pattern and nearly. No, oh, it is picked. That was a shoe that came off and it's intercepted by Colorado. All of a sudden, that defender broke in and made the pick on that. Damon Wheeler with the interception. And this is, seemed to be a, a misread by Marcus, Sonny. Well, he, he knows where he's going with the football. He tried to look it off, but again, it's maybe a coordination between he and the receiver. It looked like he wanted Gerald Harris to come back to the ball, and Harris was going the other direction. And I saw the shoe go. I said, okay, incomplete. No, it was Damon Wheeler losing his shoe on the break, but still coming up with the pick. Fourth interception of the season for Marcus Tuiasosopo, and all of a sudden Colorado has great field position. Well, you don't want to start your second drive of this half with that type of play, and they're in a position to eat some more time, but now it's Colorado's turn. Buffalo's flip-flopping around, break the backfield, and timeout called by Machete. Colorado had brought a new guy into the lineup. Daniel Graham had gone in at a sort of wing-back position, the tight end, and Machete was confused. They take another timeout. We will step aside. The Buffaloes with the ball in good field position after the Husky turnover. Back in Seattle, Colorado with the ball at the 33-yard line after Washington's first turnover, and they look to go reverse. Maybe a pass off of it. They will. End zone, batted around, incomplete. Jermaine Smith tried to come up with the interception. Javon Green, the intended wide receiver, and there's Robert Toller, who was the guy who threw it. Well, Smith wasn't fooled on this play at all. He was in a position to get the ball back for the Huskies right here. He saw it coming all the all the way right there. He lets him a little bit behind him, but the ball was already gone. You could tell it was underthrown a little bit, boy, boy. And a big break there for Colorado, Sonny, because Woo. if Smith hangs on to that one, it's the second pick of the game, and you stop Colorado almost immediately. Now they set up for the screen. They find Johnson. Breaks an arm tackle and then finally dragged down. Williams on the stop and nine on the play, so it'll be a third and short. Boy, I tell you, Lester Townsend's in position to make a good play for the Huskies that time and not being able to come up with the tackle. Third and about a half yard now for the Buffaloes. Drum the up man with Johnson, and it'll be Johnson first down and more. He could take it in, and he will. Touchdown, Colorado. Portland Johnson with his sixth touchdown of the year. Looked as though everybody took an inside angle on that one, Sonny. It was well blocked at the end of the line of scrimmage, and Portland Johnson really not having a tough time getting around the corner. Shows his speed, gets in the end zone. Watch the end. Watch the pulling lineman coming around right there. Good block by Bernardi on the end of the line of scrimmage. Hey, you play wide receiver for... Colorado you better be able to block you saw Curtis Williams going inside as well and everybody blew right by him on the corner Jeremy Aldrich on to attempt the point after Nick Peach is the holder and we are knotted once again so the Buffalo is able to capitalize on the turnover and they even the game the rushing touchdown for Cortland Johnson Colorado fans are waving the banners once again. Midway through the third quarter, the Huskies and the Buffaloes are all even at 14.
Arnold and Jarzinka back for Washington. And again, another short diagonal kick. Bearcats signaled for and taken at the 21 yard line. Everybody's starting to brew about it a little bit, but Meisen looks over to the sideline, puts both hands up, says, what else could I do? The ball was coming to me. <laughs> Cortland Johnson getting the info that maybe they need to hang on to the ball a little bit longer. Colorado's two touchdowns have come in a minute and 12 seconds of clock time. On the option, Hurst. Chased out of bounds by Gregorek and a bit of a late contact by Jayshon Sykes. What the Husky coaches were talking about is Sykes really pursued him well beyond the boundary, but they won't draw the flag that time. Sykes covers a lot of ground, boy. This young man can really fly to the outside. See Gregorek eyeing the quarterback. But right here, Willie Hurst trying to turn it on, letting up right there. You know, to be honest with you, he's clearly out of bounds. That should have been a flag. Oh, I agree with you. Gregorick was there, and he stopped in time. Rick New Eyes are pointing out that Sykes kept going. It's good enough for a first down, though, at the 31. Looked like some motion that time. First, going to get a couple. There clearly was a head across the neutral zone that time as the nose tackle stuck his helmet in, and they will draw. What's amazing to me, it was pretty obvious that he... There Did I jump, but only one official threw a I waited for it. I couldn't see the hanky at all and finally saw it come across, but there was definitely encroachment that time across the zone, and Gordon Reese knew the call. Five yards to the previous spot, still first down. So here's Sonny. Uh, you get a first and five out over your own 35-yard line. As there's an Oregonian uh, talking with Machete, Taylor Barton, the redshirt freshman from Beaverton, Oregon, a backup quarterback. He was doing some of the play calling. You can see him with the wristband as well. And Barton started number two on the depth chart, has gone back down a little bit, but he's one of the Buffs' future hopefuls at quarterback as Machete wraps things up after this year, his second after transferring from junior college. Nice read that time by Marcus Tuiasasoko. He was just about ready to pitch and saw himself getting wrapped up. Tyler Brayton was there, and at 6'6", there's no way Marcus is going to get the ball by him. Well, after uh, throwing that last interception, and you don't want to start your next series off by making an, a mental mistake, and right here, now that's the right decision. It's an individual read there by Brayton because he's really supposed to slide out. But when he saw he had the opportunity, he went after Tuiasa Sopo and wrapped him up. Young man from Pasco. Grandson of longtime Washington State baseball coach Bobo Brayton. Hurst on the draw. Nice job that time of coming off the block by Justin Bannon. Otherwise, Hurst might have really been able to break that one open, but the sophomore nose tackle came back to wrap him up. Good look at the eyes of the quarterback. Kyle Ben out there making a block. Trying to make a block, but you're right. Good job recognizing the play and whirling around and making a tackle. So Washington needing about a yard and a half here. They need to get it out beyond the 41. Hurst staying in with Conniff. Oh, boy, they shot the gap ball loose and picked up. Guess who? It's Kelly. He's going to score again as Colorado's run blitz could not have been timed better, separating the Huskies from the ball. Boy, I tell you, that was beautiful timing. And a lot, a lot of times, Todd, you know, you go in the same cadence all the time, and the defenders can pick up on that to see, who, to see who's coming. It's like Sykes. It is. Kelly with his second touchdown of the game. And again, Colorado strikes like lightning. Kick return for Kelly, fumble recovery for Kelly. They haven't had the ball much, but now they're in front. Aldrich adds the extra point, and the Buffaloes capitalize on two Husky turnovers after Washington had played error-free ball to take the lead. Sykes timed it perfectly. First and Tuiasa Sopo couldn't connect, and Kelly took it in for the score.
Aldrich walking up to the ball. And short down the middle this time. They'll finally let the return men take it. A little confusion there between Jarzinka and Arnold. And Jarzinka is going to get just over the 20 yard line before he gets wrapped up. Still some scrambling there as well by the Buffaloes who certainly feel they have a little bit of momentum right now. And Washington will try to knock this game up once again. Maurice Shaw back in the backfield again for Washington as we get things started. And a three wide out set this time for the Huskies. Kuyasa Sopo stepping nicely around, floats that one for Looker, and he can't hang on. It's an incomplete pass. Buffalo thought they had another turnover. I tell you right now, the Huskies need to go back with what the coach Neuheisel started off with to begin the third quarter. See Jeremy Stevens not be able to get re release out from the linebacker Gregory. Right there, a great throw, and looked like Looker tried to adjust himself and tripped on his own feet. And Lost concentration on the football. Look like right there, he just got his foot clipped up and it threw him off enough he couldn't hang onto the ball. Good attempt by Tui Asisopo, who again has time in the pocket. Finds Stevens, he'll be short of the first down as Gregorick wraps him up. We talked you and I, Sonny, before the game about Marcus Tui Asisopo going to the corners and throwing more. He's looked pretty comfortable in the pocket more than he has in motion today. Well, he has and he hasn't. A big interception coming off him throwing out of the pocket, whereas some of the bigger plays have been him on the corner, Todd. I remember in the, in the uh, beginning of this half, the big pass to Jeremy Stevens. And I tell you, my tight end was 6'7 and 250 pounds. And I'd be looking for him a little more often as well. See Colorado player being helped off the field. Jesse Warren, reserve no, uh, defensive tackle, the senior from Dallas. Good to see him off under his own speed. The Buffaloes have already lost Victor Rogers for the rest of the game with a knee injury. He was injured on a point after touchdown play. And there has not been any sight of Michael Lewis, the starting strong safety for a while either. And also Fred Jones, their rush in, number 13 is now the ball game. Again, Colorado timing it. Caught up the up man as a first down out over the 35 yard line before he's dropped by Elvis Brooks. Boy, it's nice when the guys are going to blitz again and come on a little dog, those backers, they hit the tackle guard gap and you have a play called for the center guard gap right here. With Conniff, you're going to pick up some good positive yardage. There's no one there in the backer position to make the play. We saw both Sykes and Gregory trying to come into the gap that time and they literally knocked one another over, Sonny. Good blocking up there, but uh, Huskies need to control the ball, keep these first downs going, move the ball downfield and Try and get some points. Quick drop. Finding Jurgens. Ball ripped free but goes out of bounds as he was wrapped up that time by Rashidi Barnes and Damon Wheeler. Yeah, you need to really hold on to that ball. Chris Jurgens is going to learn that because I'll tell you, Damon Wheeler is definitely going to go for the strip. But that's a good clean play. Ten yards, nice quick step drop and get the ball out there quickly. First time they moved down the field in two and a half minutes. The next time Tui Asasopo was picked and that led to a Colorado score. The third time the blitz and the ball coming loose led to the fumble and the touchdown for Colorado. Well, they've got Paul Arnold back in there, Todd, to get a little more speed also at running back. Harris also in at the wide spot that time. Tui Asasopo again gets the corner. Bad angle of pursuit by Colorado. Marcus tight ropes, he stepped out of bounds inside the 25. He thought he was in, the Husky fans think he's in, but the line judge says he got one foot out of the 24-yard line. Usually when you've got that time around the corner, Sonny, you eventually wait for someone to show up, but Marcus has been open every time he's turned around there. Good stiff arm right there to get some, some room from Rashidi Barnes, but you see right there, as, as he had to step across himself with his left foot, it went out of bounds at the 24. I think really it was Sykes that time who had a bad angle of pursuit for Colorado. But you know that might happen when you have Paul Arnold as your tailback coming outside. They have to respect that speed from him because everybody knows on Colorado that he's the fast guy. Here you see the total offense for Tuiasa Sopo. He gets the snap away at one. Arnold 
met by the inside, falls loose. Washington appears to have fallen on it this time. Looks like Chad Ward, 71, was able to get the big body down on it. Good call, Sonny. But those are gonna make the coaches go gray in a hurry when your young running back does not hold on. Watch the stick on Arnold on this play, but again, you hope your guy hangs onto the ball. <laughs> There's gonna be some sticks out there. Brooks right there, Barnes. Good job right there by Chad Ward to keep the drive going, and Arnold will stop and reflect on that one. Goes for no gain on the play. Again, the five wide receiver set for Washington. Looking underneath, too tall, nearly. Right there, but it stayed a little bit longer as he tried to dump it in underneath to Gerald Harris. That looked like it was gonna be a nice gainer right there. Uh, or make that first. Wide let's receiver, let's, let's watch his motion right here. See how he delivers the ball. Little bit of problems right there. You see Fred Jones back in the ball game. He had to go over him. He's a very athletic rush in, but Marcus knows that uh, you can't be lackadaisical on those throws. You gotta turn around and let it go. You gotta go with a little bit of volume. Husky fans waiting for the chance to let loose with a little bit more volume as they need to get this one inside the 14 to keep this drive going. First on the draw. Conniff missing a block and the hole got filled in a big hurry that time by Aldous Brooks. Stepped up nicely, brought the man down and the Husky field goal unit will come on. Looked like a few missed blocks in that play and also a good play by Colorado to come up and stop the play with Willie Hurst that time and a good job by Colorado to toughen up down here near the red zone. John Anderson, who's two for two in his freshman year, will try for a career long of 40 yards. Ryan Militic is the holder. Elliot Zajac, the snapper. A little over 40, actually, into a bit of a breeze, and he nails it. There's a flag down, however. At the line of scrimmage, so let's check and see. Defense was offsides. They'll decline it, take the points. And Anderson with the Long field goal, still had plenty of room to spare, showing one of the reasons why Rick Neuheisel wanted to get this young man from Florida out. He nails his third field goal of the year and closes the deficit to four. Officially a 40-yard field goal for Anderson. Steve Axman, the quarterback's coach, talking things over with Marcus Tuiasasopo. Eskurski gets set to kick off once again. I don't know if we should even bother identifying the deep receivers. Even though he tried to belt that one, it didn't get anywhere near him, and Colorado will have the ball out at the 35-yard line. T even broke. Skursky had to pick up one piece, one wet part, and one part the other direction. You well, see the, the laughter there. Even the coaches are getting a laugh out of that one a bit. When you kick the uh, little poochie kicks like that, you really do have to dig down. It's like an iron in golf. You got to go down and through the ball, and you <laughs> look like you really got the best of that team. Let's see if the Husky defense can slow them down here. The field position isn't as good as Colorado has had in the last couple of possessions, but Husky defense needs to be real tough here. New man in, Barton carrying the ball once again. He'll get a few. Issa there to make the final wrap up on him. Along with some help from Akeem Akbar. Damian Barton, who's carried the ball 21 times this year coming into the game comes in to give Cortland Johnson a bit of a breather. Husky 
fans trying to get their defense rallied a little bit. Barton once again cuts back nicely and gets the first down. Good read there. Issa and Akbar combined to drop him, but not until he's at the 46. They're doing a good job of getting out to the backers. See if we can get a look here on the right side. Barton going wide. You see Lester Towns being walled off, allowing Barton to cut back and make some real positive yardage. Sonny, they seem to be doing a nice job of just extending and letting the running backs find a seam and pop, too. Yeah, they do. They let them read it, see if there's a way they can cut back. But there wasn't any way right there as Damian Barton has the door slammed by Farms. <laughs> that was a quick read. Yeah, hell. No kidding. And, then, you know, they, they've done this, and with that speed, you have to respect it, getting to the corners. And this time, the Husky defenders are right there. Saw Farms coming from one side and Jafar Williams coming from the other spot. That's a big play. They needed that kind of play to put them in a longer down situation here, second and 11. See if the Huskies will bring somebody on this play. Get a little pressure on Machete, the quarterback. And Colorado has not done well in this game in long yardage situation. Minardi in the lineup at one wide receiver spot along with Toller as the Bucks show four wides in the pattern. Stiggers in motion. And a little back pass for Stiggers. Wide receiver holding the block nicely. He gets into Washington territory before Akbar chases him out of bounds. Again, Sonny, that's a case where you let a guy with his speed and ability just get open and go to work. Well, it doesn't take a tough pass, I'll tell you, but right here, Machete knows that he's got Stiggers. It's a lateral coming back. Far Williams not be able to get out there and Good job out there blocking on Jermaine Smith, not allowing him to make the play. Yeah, Toller did a nice job of just holding the block and letting Stiggers cut off it. It's a third and long for Colorado. They'll go the same play, different direction, and they are going to have this one stacked up as Javon Green can't find the openings. Akbar there on the tackle along with Smith. I think they got Toller that time, 17 for... A little hold on the jersey of the Huskies. Smith still shaken up. He's down on the field. Now hops up and hobbles away. Javon Green with the reception there, Todd, but good defense. And then looked like Toller and I thought he kept the hands Von inside pretty well. Though. Well, I think what happened was after the play, we missed it a little bit. But, you know, those elbows have to stay tight into your body. And a little tough to see from that angle, but it was a good call for the Huskies on their part. At least Rick Neuheisel thinks so. They'll decline the penalty. Let's it down, advance to fourth down, and Peach is on the punt once again. This is where you got to watch any trickery. They've done it before, and Colorado... Uh, been known to do different plays as we saw in that now the Huskies call early. timeout defensively Yeah, 12 people on the field yep the special teams both teams have had to call timeouts a couple times because of having extra players on the field closing seconds of the third quarter Colorado with two touchdowns in the quarter to take the lead on Washington Huskies slated to get the ball back when we return Back in Seattle, Colorado getting set to punt. Jarzinka back deep for the Huskies. Peach hangs that one up, it's short. Jarzinka waving for the fair catch, will take it at the 20 yard line and the Huskies will have the ball there. Well, much has been said about the comments of Ty Gregorek when Rick Neuheisel decided to leave Colorado for the University of Washington and prior to the game this week, he talked a little bit more about Rick's move from Boulder to Seattle. 
I had a lot of respect for the guy to come back, to fly back from Seattle to, and address us. You know, a lot of the guys were saying, you know, how he read from his yellow notepad the whole time, and it was a pretty short speech. However, you know, he did take the time to do it, and at the end of the speech, he said, did anyone have anything to say? And it was silent for about a minute, and, you know, I just said, you know, we'll see you the 25th. It wasn't meant to be like this big calling out, you know, we'll see you the 25th. I mean, it's kind of how it's kind of caused. Young man's words taken a little bit out of proportion. The option pitch to Hurst is going to come back. There's a flag in the Washington backfield. And he's just a very straight up honest guy. As he said, he didn't uh, mean it as any bragging or boasting or anything else and uh, made the most out of what was an uncomfortable situation. And as Rick has said, he had to read from the notepad to keep from breaking down because he was leaving those young men. Well, you know, you got to keep your concentration. It's a lot easier when you can do it that way. And, you know, give those guys a lot of credit. I, I think that uh, Gregory said it for everybody Flipping on both sides. Offense, half the distance to go from the spot of the foul. Still first down. We'll watch Ty Gregorick in pursuit on that last option play. Playing off Jeremy Stevens there on the block. Good pursuit down the line of scrimmage and doing what a linebacker is supposed to do is knock the running back out of bounds. See the Husky uh, staff wanted a face mask call but didn't get that so the ball spotted back. You look on the front left there, the Colorado jerseys, that is a Columbine flower, which they are wearing in tribute to the students of Columbine High School. It's also in their media guide as they pay homage to those young men and women in their area. Tuiasa Sopo keeping again, met, ball pops loose as he's hit from behind. Scramble for it, the Buffaloes say they have it. Boy, this could be a really big turnover the third of the quarter against Washington if they aren't able to hang on to it. It appeared to be some Husky jerseys, and it will be Washington's ball. Like Elliot Silvers yes. came up with it. What a break for the Huskies, and again, Tuyasa Sopo. <laughs> Watch him get popped from behind, though, on this one. Ball hanging out there, and Sykes just leveled him. Well, when you run the option like that, you're going to get hit from a lot of different directions. And good job that time. Uh, it looked like uh, Alvis Brooks holding him up, doing a good job. And like you say, Sykes is everywhere today, popping everybody. And thankfully for the Huskies, they'll get a few moments to take a breath and collect things because we have come to the end of the third quarter of play. The Huskies dodging a bullet on that last play as they almost turned it over once again. Colorado up at the end of three. Fifteen minutes remaining in the ball game. The visiting Colorado Buffaloes, who have never lost at Husky Stadium, lead Washington 21-17 going into the fourth quarter of play. Second and long for the Huskies. They'll have the ball at their 19-yard line. And Shaw will be back in the lineup once again as we get set to return to play. Again, that one went right through the hands of the defender. There's Don James over on the far side of the field. He was honored just a few moments ago. And what the heck around here? You could practically name the Hall of Fame for him. A little bit of the Colorado connection between Don James and Rick Neuheisel. Second Husky head coach to be an assistant coach with the Buffaloes. And Rick has done a good job of bringing Don back around the program, Todd, and talking to the kids and just making himself visible around the team. Yep, he came and stopped by our booth when we were down in Provo. He spent a lot of time visiting with Lavelle Edwards and Lee Corso while he was down there. Good to see him. Third down and a lot to go for the Huskies. Middle open. And Tuyasa Sopo completes that one to Todd Elstrom. First catch of the day for Elstrom. He put that one on the numbers. 
third catch of the year for Elstrom, who's the only guy with a receiving touchdown so far this year. Watch this play. He does a great thing to Yasa Sopo. He's stepping up, and look how he plants that foot and rifles the football. And Elstrom with a nice grab using his hands. That's when I like to see Tuiasa Sopo throw the ball if he's going to be a pocket thrower, is be able to plant, step, and deliver. Sophomore from Puyallup picking up a big first down. Arnold wrapped up by Sykes after he got a couple. That last pass play, Sonny, is one of those ones that a Husky fan looks at and says, hey, why don't they do more of that? <laughs> Yeah, they uh, are. Give it to Paul Arnold more. You know, they, everybody's got an opinion on it, but it's all a part of the scheme that Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator, has. you got to mix it up a little bit and give the defense different looks. You know, University of Washington is not a BYU program where they're known for throwing the football like that, but that time I was real impressed with Tuya Sopo on that throw. Arnold credited with five on that carry. Around the corner and a big first down that time. Oh. That one going to Kevin Ware at the tight end position. New guy that we don't have anywhere. He's stepping up because of the injury to John Westra. And so Ware making the reception, his first of the season. He's a big young man out of Texas and Good play action on this one. Marcus really selling and Paul Arnold really selling the run. Coming back underneath to Young Ware. And right here you're going to see a big pop <laughs> coming. Albus Brooks coming from out of nowhere to lay a load on uh, the freshman tight end. 6'2", 240 freshman from Spring, Texas. And he picks up the first down in Colorado territory. Wide open. Looking for the end zone. Caught. Harris, touchdown. Nice play action sell on it. You mentioned it a moment ago, it bears repeating again. Good play calling by the Washington staff. That time it's selling the play. They sold the sweep on the last play, the running play. This time the option, Harris going down, doing a little post and seam route and wide open and a beautiful throw that time by Tuyasa so They were able to get Rashidi Barnes to bite on it and Gerald Harris makes the catch his first touchdown reception of the year. Gerald Harris caught it with his hands. It was a nice grab. Anderson with the extra point. Washington with another impressive drive and they take the lead on Colorado. A minute and a half gone in the fourth quarter. The Huskies with a six-play drive. The bomb gives them the lead. Washington regaining the lead on the passing touchdown. Their longest passing touchdown play of the year. And Skursky set to kick it off once again. Kelly sneaking over and he read it perfectly. He's right in position to take the kick and the guy they don't want to have on the ball has it once again. He's out over the 30 yard line before he's dropped. Jafar Williams leading the tacklers that time for Washington. Sonny, we talked about the quarterback selling the touchdown, but it was a pretty good selling job by Gerald Harris as well for that score. Well, one thing when you run the option with the, the offense here, the wide receiver will come down and block the linebacker that time and he sold it that he was going to do that. Brooks released him over to to number three Rashidi Barnes and he's not able to get over there in time and that was a very nice play. A good call by Carl Durrell the offensive coordinator and what I like about it most is Gerald Harris making the over the shoulder catch. Washington's defense has allowed only 170 yards of total offense to Colorado in the game. It's been the turnovers that have killed them so far. Machete under some pressure dumps it out and Stiggers can't hang on. There, there's the pressure right there where the young quarterback Machete threw again off his rear foot and threw behind Stiggers. Tough catch. 
We talked about the top of the game about Washington making adjustments in second halves, which they did against BYU and Air Force. We see what Marcus Tuiasosopo did the first game in the near comeback, but then the defense adjusting against Air Force after the two drives by the Falcons early. Well, and also today, you're looking at the University of Washington, second half already. A better than two for one margin in total offense, but Colorado makes that completion to John Minardi, and he gets a few extra yards. There's a late flag thrown on the play as well. But they've kept this Colorado team, Sonny, pretty well bottled up. As we said, this team averages over 527 yards a game of offense, and they have 170 through the first three quarters. Illegal use of hands against Colorado will bring this play back. Time of possession in the Huskies' favor as well, Todd. And that really is, not, is what the Husky coaches want to do, is keep the ball the on the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Yeah, the three Colorado touchdowns have come on a kickoff return, a fumble recovery, and a 55-0 second drive after the interception. Ball's going to be spotted back at the 32-yard line. And the Huskies, it's almost like an incomplete play practically on the down. It's going to be second and just over 10 yards to go. The pressure, they release it underneath for Charrington. Cuts back nicely and then gets out over the 40-yard line before Williams knocks him down. Pretty good play. We haven't seen a lot of Dwayne Charrington today. Good reception right there. The young man coming underneath on a little screen. Good call when you've got second and long. See where the linebackers are dropping off. Jamon Willis dropping off way out of position, and Daryl Daniels not being close to where the play was going to be in. Good, good play by Colorado. Big third down here for the Husky defense as Colorado needs to get it to the 43. Machete finding a man in the seam, and an easy one there as he just turned and was wide open in the seam. Cedric Cormier with his first catch of the game. And he'll pick up a first down for Colorado. Again, the receiver just settling in between the defensive back and the linebacker on that side, Darrell Daniels, finding a nice little hole and good throw. Bit of a tribute to the Husky defense, though, Sonny. That's a couple of times that Gary Barnett has gone to the pass on those third and short situations. They come back on the ground now, and Sherrington carrying there. Machete, by the way, 12 of 21, make it 13 to 22 passing now after that last completion. We'll be back with more action from Seattle, Colorado, trying to drive down and tie or take the lead on Washington. A lot of action left to go in the fourth quarter. Colorado with the ball, second down at the Washington 45. That's McCready, the motion man. Sherrington finds some room, first down and inside the Husky 35-yard line before Williams comes up to make the stop with some help from Akbar. Wayne Sherrington's battled injuries throughout his Colorado career, had ankle and groin injuries that caused him to miss action last year. That ankle seems to be bothering him again as he hobbles off the field. Cortland Johnson has not returned to action for a while. Barton's been in, and Barton returns right now as we take a look at what the three Buffalo runners have done so far. A little over 100 yards combined between the three, and it's Barton who's in there now on this first down play. Cormier in motion. The wind picks up a little bit behind the Buffaloes. Throwing through the hands of Cormier that time as he tried to adjust and make that grab. Tuiaea had dropped off to cover him along with Daniels. Appeared to be a little zone blitz on that and Tuiaea getting out there in coverage, but that play has been open several times a day, and if it hasn't been for Machete missing or throwing behind the receiver or having drops, there would have been a few more completions. Gary Barnett adopted the slogan return to dominance as he came back to Boulder and 
a little bit has been made about the lack of toughness that Rick Neuheisel had in Boulder and Barnett trying to get that back that he experienced as an assistant under McCartney. Barton, big hole on the right side. He'll get down near the 20 yard line. Akbar was the first to get to him. But an impressive job by the right side of that Colorado offensive line. Bedell and Cook opening the hole that time for junior Damian Barton. Watch the linebackers on this play. See Jamon Willis getting blocked right there. Too late, nobody else filling the gap for him. Joe Hanningmeyer with a nice opening as well, showing you why that guy was an all Big 12 performer a year ago. He was doubtful with some back spasms during the week. And even the baby buffs are, well, they're bottled up, but they're happy. Or they're pacified, as the case may be. Machete finding Stiggers, another tough pass. All those little sideline routes lately, Sonny, the receivers have had to twist and adjust a great deal. Well, like I said earlier, Machete doesn't have the best technique of uh, any quarterback we've seen this year or in recently, and uh, he's making it tough on his re receivers in the flat. You look at the senior who transferred from Mount Sac Junior College. Sixth in the NCAA in efficiency rating coming into the game today, though, at 167.4. You see his numbers prior to that last incompletion. Throwing in underneath and finds Cormier who breaks one tackle but won't get much further as Akbar wraps him up inside the 20 yard line. That'll bring a third and long up for Colorado. Another missed tackle down there and Akbar's been in on a lot of plays today having to come up and make the grab right there. And Colorado with a big third down here, Todd. It's like third and eight. Buffalo's already within the range of their kicker, Jeremy Aldrich. The Huskies right now want to bring Aldrich out on the field. Machete looking to go end zone, and it'll come back as the play was blown dead before that pass. So the Buffalo's jumping as Minardi was going into the end zone. And we'll await the signal from Gordon Reese. Five yards from the previous spot. So if they went at end zone on third and eight, be interesting to see now what Gary Barnett will elect to do on third and 13. Well, the corner, Anthony Von Tour, after the flag and the whistle kind of stopped and they completed the pass. And, you know, you got to still play all the way through, Todd. You don't want to let up if, if the call could have been against you. That infamous dead ball kind of foul, I think we've seen earlier in the season. Yep. Although with those whistles, that's one reason to stop. But pretty out high, Stickers in the slot, looking underneath, finds Minardi. He will be short of the first down, it appears, by about a yard. John Minardi, a nice looking route that time on the little slant in. Bontour on the coverage. And the officials calling timeout for measurement. Gary Barnett waiting to see just how close his team is. He's got to be at least uh, a yard and a half from picking up this first down. And he looks. wants to decide, though, this is a good drive, and his team has moved the ball well in the half, but you never know when you're going to get another chance to maybe put seven on the board, even though there's still plenty of time to go in the quarter. Right, get the first, go for the lead, or tie it up and see what happens. We'll see the distance there, and let's see what Barnett is elected to do. He will bring the field goal kicker out. Jeremy Aldrich is six for six for the season. Or five, wait, five for six, excuse me. He missed earlier today on his only attempt. After being five for five a week ago, they're going to respot the ball. Aldrich missed at the other end. You see Peach on the hold. This one will be a 29 yarder. And the senior from Federal Heights, Colorado, trying to tie the game up. Perfectly through, and we're all even at 24. Still plenty of time for both these teams. Aldrich makes amends for his earlier miss. We're all even. A young man who was an honorable mention All-American a year ago has tied the ball game up again.
Machete leading his team down to a tying field goal as he talks things over with Taylor Barton. We're all even, a 12th play, 55-yard drive, and Machete fairly efficient. Again, the bad passes were in the little leak outs to the sidelines that were supposedly easy tosses, and Aldrich evening it up with his first field goal of the day in two attempts. Aldrich set to kick off and hoists another short one, although this one's returnable now, and Jarzinka inside the 20. Saw something and he wanted to hustle through the hole. Gets out to about the 30 yard line before he's dropped down. Jayshon Sykes again leading the tacklers for Colorado. He's everywhere. Surprised he doesn't drive the bus back to the airport as well. <laughs> You're right, he's a good one. Sonny, in the first couple weeks of the season, the Huskies made some significant adjustments at halftime. First on offense against BYU, then even earlier than halftime after the opening couple drives by the Air Force Falcons a week ago. Well, you're right. And the defensive versus Air Force was very big. It really shut down that option attack. And, but the offense screwed up. They didn't really get anything going. They, you know, the big turnovers and the punting game went to, out the window. And But today, the second half, they've really done a good job in, in uh, taking care of Colorado so far. The Huskies have also made some adjustments in this game against the Colorado Buffaloes. And Again, a team that averages better than 520 yards a game of total offense, kept fairly well bottled up by Washington, 170 yards through three quarters of play. And the Huskies have done a pretty good job as well. But look at the difference for both teams in this second half, in a quarter and a half, as opposed to the opening 30 minutes of the ball game. Yeah, you're right, Todd. They, you know, it's again, those adjustments you're talking about, but the opening drive I thought the most impressive of the Huskies was the 80 yard and they scored within under three minutes mixing it up quite well unfortunately in the next series they come back with an interception and you kind of lose some of your momentum you know the old Mo that plays on this game so much and uh, that took a little bit out of him and Colorado was able to capitalize on a couple big mistakes Harris in motion Hurst is the tailback this time with Conop the up man Conop bounces off a tackle then Walrus dropped him just when he was getting up ahead of steam and you can see Connup's reaction he said just when I thought I was going somewhere very good job of cutting back against the grain right there but Walrus you're right uh, 16 for Colorado with a really big play Pat Connup's just excited he's carrying a ball <laughs> he hasn't carried it much but Machete right there looking at the clock and seeing what's going on with that Husky offense and can his teammates stop him Hurst bounces off running into the clear. He'll take it out over the 45 before he's wrapped up. Wall Ruse and Brayton leading the tacklers along with Barnes and a first down for Washington. Husky coaches would like to see a 13, 14, 15 play drive and eat up some time with eight minutes to go in this ball game. And that was a nice call right there. Willie Hurst with some room to run. Good blocking up front. Little cut back trying to sneak outside to pick up some more yardage, but again, there's that name again, Walrus. Hurst now with 62 yards to lead the Husky rushing attack as he moved by Tuiasa Sopo on that play. He tries to vault the line that time, but it's unsuccessful. Again, that time Colorado coming with a little dog action up front and bringing Sykes seven. Getting up through the gaps and disrupt the play. Yeah, Kyle Ben tried to get a, a helmet on him and was unsuccessful. And Sykes just gives you a weapon on defense. I don't think folks understand that sometimes. Yes, sometimes he gambles and misses, but he's able to make such key plays. He has an innate sense of getting to the right spot. Well, he's only a sophomore as well, and he'll grow into that role. Buffs change packages here and remove Sykes, go to more of a nickel look. On the corner, Tuiasa Sopo finding Looker, his first catch of the day, and another first down for Washington at about the 35-yard line. Beat Ben Kelly that time, and let's take a look at it. Good job, Dane Looker, not, that time not getting tripped up by his own feet on this play. <laughs> Watch him go down, drive the defender, and then break it off towards the sideline. But the key on this play was the line blocking and allowing Tuiasa Sopo to get around the corner and throw the ball with, with his shoulders going upfield towards the receiver. Beat Donald Strickland, the redshirt freshman that time from San Francisco. He's a backup for Damon Wheeler in the corner spot, plays in the nickel, but another first down for Washington. 
first. Good job on the left side that time blocking as Brayton was held up well. And a couple guys down for Colorado as Hurst picks up a good flip before Rashidi Barnes brought him down. It's quite a few Buffaloes getting knocked out of the ball game today, and there are quite a few are getting up slow. And you got to give credit to those big guys up front for the Huskies that are doing their job. That time looked like Rock Nelson with a big block. Willie Hurst seems to be getting a little, little action going here. Well, and he? I know that's one of the things you as a quarterback love to see and have seen is when that front five starts to mature and starts to come off and fire and hit the gaps as a unit. That's right. They're, they're doing a good job right now. First taking it inside the 30 on that last carry. He'll go again and get close to first down yardage. Sykes wrapping him up along with Kelly. And it depends on where they'll put this spot, but first appears to be a few inches short yet of the first down. You get a look at Rock Nelson, what a name for a lineman, a sophomore <laughs> from Shortcrest High in Seattle. Big horses across the front. Three 300 pounders. Actually, a fourth one, Chad Ward, up at 315. Nelson's the lightweight. He's only 290. Well, Coach Gilbertson has said that every week they've gotten a little bit better. The curve is starting to go up, up and up, and not in great leaps and bounds, but today they're doing an excellent job up front. It's been a tradition in Washington, and Chad Ward and his mates are doing it again. Tuiasa Sopo, a little naked bootleg. Wide open that time is Anthony Meisen. He'll make the catch for a first down. I'll tell you, that time he had to lock that ball over Fred Jones who this year for Colorado has the only sack for them, but watch this 13, they're blitzing again, coming on the little dog action, and that time lofting it perfectly to Meisen over the top for a big first down. Here's the nicest number of the day, Sonny Marcus Tuiasasopo is only 11 and 22, but he's completed his last five passes. That's been one of the big keys to Husky success. From the Colorado 17, Hurst once again breaks through the line. Nice job that time of just driving the legs and picking up additional yardage. Brooks bringing him down along with some help from Barnes. <laughs> see, yeah. That's what you want to see, though. You know, Rick Neuheisel has said it. I want these guys to make the most of an opportunity, and he's doing it. That time, I tell you, you know, we were talking about this. Watch Rock Nelson, 55, come out and get the linebacker, Gregory, right here. But what happens is their helmets get locked up. They, they look like Elk up in the running season. <laughs> Good blocking, though. You're right, Todd. They're, they've really come together. There right there, are. you see it. <laughs> that's, that's the way to stay head to head with your man. Yeah, Good job. First came out of the out of the pile and did it. Did the little bodybuilder pose. He's he's fired up with good reason. He's got it again. Had a set for the goal line, but he was cut off by Frederick and Brooks. Got some help from Barnes as well, but Willie Hurst. Making the most of his opportunities. Well, if the Huskies can punch it in right here, I tell you what, it's going to be a really big jump for this offense for the Huskies, and particularly this line, because that's where it all starts. First with 84 yards rushing, so he's closing in on triple figures, and look what this team has done against the Colorado defense. Well, I've never had a running back or quarterback say they've done it on their own, and certainly Willie Hurst today, uh-oh, illegal. Gordon Reese firing the Illegal flag. substitution on the offense. The huddle broke with tall players. That's a five-yard penalty That's from the previous the new spot. Rule on substitution. They're still first down. And they didn't call it the pass. We saw it. You and I saw it a couple times in Provo when it didn't get called. And Rick Neuheisel there. Your team is not allowed to break. Your sub has to come inside the hash marks. The player he replaces has to leave the huddle within three seconds. And if you break the huddle with 12, it's an illegal substitution. So first and goal back at the 10 now. Meisen coming in with the play, replacing Ware. Yeah, a little more yardage for the pass routes, right? That's it, but it also the clock continues to run. Huskies have to get something on the scoreboard here. Conniff adjusting. He might not have come to a stop. First, the short yardage gain that time is really the defensive line did a nice job of sliding over. Grigorek helping to secure him. Sykes was also there, and they got some good help that time by Sean Jarney on the defensive tackle spot. I look for the Huskies not to, well, timeout right now from Colorado, but the Huskies right there, number 15, Anderson is ready and willing to go. You don't want to make a lot of 
dangerous calls and you're in a great position right now with the clock winding down to just kick a field goal if you need to. Sonny, it's an interesting time for Gary Barnett to call a timeout, the second down, and they leave the Buffaloes with just one left for a potential tying drive that they might need in the closing minutes. Second down for the Huskies when we come back as they get a chance to perhaps go in front. Washington maintaining the ball now for 10 plays on this drive. They've eaten up better than five and a half minutes of clock time. And a second and goal situation for them here. Jurgens and Harris split to the top of your screen. First continuing in the backfield. Trying to find Jurgens. Touchdown, Washington. Oh, did he do a great job of pinning his defender inside. Todd, I tell you, he did. And the reason for that, two things. He sold him There's inside. Manu celebrating that touchdown pass. Well, he should be. <laughs> Good sprint out to the corner. Again, on the run. Looking, stopping, floating it out there. Weren't able to see it, but right there, I tell you, Chris Jurgens is 6-3, walled off Ben Kelly. Kelly had no chance and perfectly thrown football. Anderson on to attempt the extra point that'll push it back to seven. He gets it. Tell you what, first touchdown of the year for Chris Jurgens, and I like this guy. He runs great patterns, has good touch on the ball, and then he gets the feet down as well. Watch it once again here. He's only a sophomore, and again, I have to say that this pass was thrown exactly where it had to be, and Jurgens did a great job of getting those feet down. Washington's offense comes through. It's up to the defense now with a little more than three to go. Back in Seattle, and you know, the celebrations have not begun early, but it's nice to see out on Lake Washington as the Huskies take the lead on the touchdown pass from Tuiasa Sopo to Jurgens. Put a great look right there, Todd. Here's the key right now, Curry. Well, and maybe not giving it to Kelly, and he's not got the ball this time, so that may be a bit of good news, but a good run back nonetheless that time by Wheeler. He takes it out over the 30-yard line. It's going to go back a little further, though, Todd. Hold on, Colorado. The flag marked at about the 25, so the Buffaloes will be bottled up rather deep as they look to try to even this game. Boy, those two returning men put a little scare in every coach. Very talented young men for Colorado. Here's a guy that's going to put a scare into defenses as well as the season goes along, and that's Chris Jurgens. Well, Chris Jurgens has really come on after last year playing, and that time you can see he had at least three yards of separation between himself and Ben Kelly, and with that big frame of his, able to, with the perfectly thrown pass, make the touchdown, and Coach Newhouse was like that play call. You don't think he wants this win too bad, do you? i tell you what, I haven't met a coach yet that doesn't want to win every ball game they go into, but this one would, I think, be particularly sweet. Two of the top all-time teams in terms of victories. Colorado trying to get back here now. Machete firing off the fingertips that time of Minardi and incomplete. I tell you what, Machete has really not made it easy for any of these receivers. He just doesn't look comfortable. Maybe it's his bum knee that he had coming into the ball game and not being able to put pressure on it like he should and, and deliver the ball downfield. Wind starting to pick up a little bit. You see Gary Barnett's reaction. As his team is not exactly being impressive down the field right now. Machete looking over the middle again behind his intended receiver as he tried to find Roman Hollowell. He might have roughing the passer down there. 
like Triplett came in a little late. You just can't make those kind of mental mistakes. Coming down with less than three minutes to go in the ball game. Let's see if we can get a look here. Ball is clearly gone. Couldn't quite tell, but but you're right, Todd. The ball was still poorly thrown by the quarterback. There you see Coach Rick talking to Larry Triplett right there. That young man just can't make those kind of mistakes when your team is really on the ropes here a little bit because Colorado has the ball with time. First down for Colorado at the 30 yard line. The checkoff pass this time. Stiggers wrestled down to the ground by Akbar. He's trying to claim he was grabbed by the face mask. Towns also there to cover for Washington. And a lot of arguing going on. He down lost in the front ball. Of Colorado sidelines. Yeah. He appeared to be well down. Towns is on the ball, but he appeared to have been down by contact. They're going to talk it over, though. Rick Neuheisel eagerly waiting for this call. Yeah, you see what he thinks about it. Gordon Reese apparently ready to go to the microphone. Here's his interpretation. There was an inadvertent whistle on the play during the fumble. Colorado has the choice to take the ball at the spot of the fumble or replay the down. That's a tough one. Tough one if you're a coach, an inadvertent whistle. Well, there was a fumble, but who came up with it? We'll see right here. The ball is gone. His ball has been long gone. We're back underway as Green gets this reception and takes it out to the 45 yard line for a first down. Now, emotionally, right now, Sonny, the Husky defense has to regroup from that, from what they thought they had as a turnover and settle back down once again. The player down on the field for Washington as we take a look once again. This is the previous play. Right, the ball has been gone for a long time. You see it rolling around on the ground. Nobody on it. I'm not sure what Stiggers was complaining about earlier. He said, oh, he's saying he was down, but clearly he was not down. He also came up and said he was grabbed by the, the face mask as well. But he definitely wasn't. But the inadvertent whistle cost the Huskies that time. An official screened away from the ball, couldn't see it, couldn't see that it had popped loose. And had to make that call. That is Jabari Issa down on the ground. Able to get up on his own feet as Rick Neuheisel continues to debate the previous call and Issa seems very upset as he leaves the field. He's hollering back towards oh no. the sidelines and also he doesn't want to come out of the lineup either. Well he's just yelling encouragement to the defense to toughen up with 226 to go. Another little quick out for Stiggers. They try to wall off an area for him. He loses his balance as he stared Chewy Aiea and Akbar in the face and I tell you it's a good down. I'm not quite sure Stiggers was thinking. He was probably looking for the big play, but most importantly, as they did burn that early timeout, Todd, they've only got one left with two minutes to go. They need to get to the Washington 45 for a first down. You know they're going to be looking to throw most of the way. Machete flushed out of the pocket, turns and chased out of bounds for no gain. Tui Aiea there to force him over to the sidelines and brings up a third and long for Colorado now. You see Machete talking with his lineman a little bit. Well, good job that time by Jeremiah Farms to get a little bit of jersey on the Buffalo coming out to the flat. And Machete had nowhere to go. He looked like he was going to go to that. Again, they've been going that route a lot. Husky's going to a nickel look now. Again, the ball needs to get to the Washington 45. With time deflected incomplete. Good pressure that time up front for Washington. We've seen that a lot in recent weeks. I've seen it a lot in the pro game where the defensive lineman will just eyeball the quarterback's eyes and 
really not put on a big rush on the quarterback, but just hang on the line of scrimmage, and as soon as he releases, they jump. I think that was Ryan Julian who got some pressure in. Let's see. Look, it was Larry Triplett. Well, Triplett there, but Julian also collapsed in the pocket. That's what it meant originally, and then Triplett made the deflection play. So fourth down, the Buffaloes will go for it. They're two for five on fourth downs this year. Slant pattern wide open, first down, Javon Green tripped up on a saving tackle right there. Otherwise, he might have been headed for pay dirt. There is a player down momentarily, Farms, but he gets his way back up slowly to his feet. And Fontour wrapped him up, but Green just on the little slant in pattern, a junior from Inglewood, California, who averages better than 10 yards a catch. A lot of room to throw the ball right in the middle of the field, one on one right there, Von Truer on green, and big tackle right there. You're right, Todd, and he hadn't got the shoe. And, well, the ground can't cause the fumble. Machete going towards the end zone for Skiggers. He misadjusted. The ball hangs, but it's incomplete. Smith covering, and if Smith had gotten a little bit better break there, Sonny, he might have been able to make the interception again. Well, if uh, Machete had thrown the ball like he was supposed to, he probably would have had the interception, but he's been throwing some bad balls downfield. Yeah, Stiggers broke nowhere near the ball. The real miscommunication that time between quarterback and receiver. Boy, what a big fourth down play, though, and a nice job by Javon Green. Machete again with time over the middle, right through the hands of his big tight end, Daniel Graham. And he was covered very well that time by Renard Edwards. Very catchable ball right here from the son of the ex-Oregon linebacker, Tom Graham. But you're right, Edwards is right there and disrupted his concentration a little bit. Machete thought he should have held on for the game. Uh, Machete kind of went for the easy one that time. There's a look at Edwards over on the sideline. Wide open through the hands of Stiggers that time and incomplete. Roderick Green was the nearest Husky to the ball, but he'd given a huge cushion that time, and Stiggers had to go up for it a little bit, but still did not make the play on it, and it brings up another big fourth down for Colorado. And their last time out coming up, but that time you're right, the Husky defense has given them everything underneath, not letting them get deep, beat deep, and I'll tell you what, a little higher bounce, they might have had a pick off the deflection. A little lower or a little bit play by Stiggers and it might have been in big trouble. Gary Barnett has burned his final timeout. His team is facing another fourth and long situation in a chance to try to get into the end zone and tie the ball game up. minute to go. Fourth and ten for Colorado. Machete floating for the end zone. His receiver broke the wrong way. Intercepted for the touchback. Washington will have the ball at the 20. Anthony Bontour making amends. But again, a big mistake by the wide receiver, Sonny, as he and Machete were not on the same page. How many times do you see that, Todd, where they have a timeout? The other team calls a timeout. You got double timeouts and you're still not on the same page. Right here, a lot of time to throw the football. Machete just laying it up, but Toller broke underneath. Bontour made the pick. The Huskies had called a timeout. A little celebration there by Bobby Howe, <laughs> former Colorado assistant coach, now with the Huskies. Rick Neuheisel's team has the ball, but they need to keep some composure right now. I say a knee. What do you think, Todd? No, no maybe timeouts? a couple of them. is not only going to get his first win as the head coach of the Huskies, he will get the 600th all-time victory 
in Washington football history, making the Huskies only the 16th school to reach that plateau. Ironically, a couple of weeks behind the Colorado Buffaloes <laughs> of all schools. I know. We're, we're tied with the Huskies coming into the year and got it with their first win. Steve Axman giving him congratulations. And all they have to do is kneel one more time. There are the wins again. The powerhouses, Michigan and Notre Dame up at the top, but Colorado and Washington now moving into the number 600 spot. Tui Asasopo takes a knee, and that will do it as Washington survives Colorado's capitalizing on turnovers in the third quarter. And an emotional moment for Rick Neuheisel now as he'll talk to many of the young men he helped recruit to Colorado, but he gets his first win as head coach of the Huskies and comes up with a big victory over the Colorado Buffaloes. Time now to take a look at our drive of the day. It came in the fourth quarter, the Huskies with this GM drive of the day. The catch by Dane Looker along the sidelines was a big one. Then Meisen out in the flat. First with a big day rushing, came up with this big gain as he was impressive through the tackles, ran for 85 yards today, and then the touch pass and a great route by Jurgens. That is our GM drive of the day. That turned out to be the winning score. That turned out to be the touchdown pass for Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, capping our GM drive of the day and capping our ball game as the Huskies get their first victory of the season, defeating the Colorado Buffaloes by a score of 31-24.